told you a lot of lies when you were a kid, and like an asshole, you believed them all. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot I was. Yeah. So it, embarrassing. Yeah. Um, I actually just saw a mom was doing that about her uh, adult son. Like a friend of mine that I know, and she was going like he believed, and I was like, "But that's because you told Cause, him." Because yeah, you lied to him. He you believed in Jesus. <laughs> that's, uh, that's why he believed it. Shh, I forgot her else here. <laughs> He's coming. Yeah, buddy. Jesus is coming. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's that time of the year when uh, you can vote on all the different comedy things and. Uh, We've already started up on the iBang, the Comedian of the Year and Comedy Movie of the Year. Yeah, those are the big categories, so you can head to the iBang, vote along with us, and uh, have your voice heard, finally. For, yeah, Comedian of the Year, you'll find it right there, and then Movie of the Year, Comedy Movie of the Year, we have uh, under Slim Pickens. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a little rough this year. Well, I'll tell you this. That Star Wars thing shocked me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, <laughs> the last uh, Skywalker. Yeah. Ooh. So good. Yeah, they're all dead now. <laughs> so sad. Every Skywalker is dead. No. The Jedis were a failure. That's what we found out. Yeah. Uh, they don't have a, a winning streak, really. Now, who's the the last Skywalker? What's her name? The young girl, Ray. Ray. Yeah, Ray. Ray. There's a scene, and I don't want to give it away for everybody. There's a scene in a movie uh, where she's on Tatooine, and uh, there was nowhere else for her to go. She had to shit in a bucket. <laughs> really? There's not a restroom on Tatooine, and it's more difficult for women than it is for men. Just in a bucket of sand? I know. It was just an empty, rusty bucket, you know? But it was filled with metachlorians. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I like is that R2-D2. Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. that fucker. So funny. He's an awesome droid, Ron. Now, uh, coming up later on in the show, uh, we're going to have the last OG uh, unmasked with uh, Tracy Morgan and friends. Mm -hmm. P.S. One of the friends is Method Man for everybody <laughs> in Staten Island who can't drop the whole Wu-Tang thing. <laughs> <laughs> All those Wu Tang guys are crazy, aren't they? Yeah, it never it never ends for Staten Island. Well, this uh, is their one pride point, I feel. Well, the other pride point is they're trying to leave the city, and say that they're part of upstate New York, mm -hmm. um, the new town of Shaolin. Yes, <laughs> the uh, what you know, a lot of people like to consider now to be old New York. Mm -hmm. I was over there with the creeps, and I'm just like. Why is everybody driving old fucking Pontiacs and uh, Chevy Malibus? It's like Cuba over there. Uh, and then uh, we're going to have another thing called Todd Chrisley blackmails his own daughter. Uh, but the stuff for you to focus on is head on over to the iBank today. Comedian of the Year, uh, Comedy Movie of the Year. Uh, and I'm, you know, I brought up the Creeps. Saturday, January 18th, we're in uh, Detroit. We're calling it the Panic in Detroit. Uh, as a uh, stuff, um, just like a little salute to David Bowie, the way they say it in England. And uh, also tickets are on sale for uh, for New York City, uh, which is uh, one of our favorite theaters, at Gramercy Theater. I love that theater. And then we're heading down to uh, Tampa, in the in this early spring so go to creeps tour.com these are a great uh last minute ticket item for people for christmas oh like, yeah that's a perfect gift you can be like honey i got you something you're gonna love <laughs> what is it well you know bobby kelly and rich Voss and jim florentine yeah, yeah well they teamed up with ron bennington and they're going out calling themselves <laughs> the creeps and they're so funny and they got uh observational things that they do you know, like they'll say, like, you ever notice there's a butter dish, but there's not a jelly dish? You know, stuff like that. Uh, fun stuff like that. I'm so surprised I could shit in a Tatooine bucket right yeah. now. Uh, you know, at Rich Falls, he's just like, he'll look around the room and he'll be like, what kind of shirt is that? What are you, wine? Or, you know what I mean? Like, he'll find something about you that's just a little bit off. <laughs> Pointed out to the rest of the room. Like, look at that feller's nose. You know what I mean? You take a piss out of that nose, it's uh, 
It's amusing. You know, that's what I like about it. It's amusing. You it know? seems like a present for you as much as me. It's a present for all of us in Crepes. Crepes tour. It's so damn fun. You know, Bobby <laughs> Kelly, he'll come out and he'll remark on his weight and how, you know, it's difficult being a larger man. And that's something that I can identify yeah, with. Yeah, that's my kind of humor. Squeezed into my own little uh, seat there. <laughs> you know, I'll just sit there as fat as shit. And I'm like, God damn it, Bobby, you've, you've hit the nail on the head once again. <laughs> And that Jim Florentine, boy, I, I know him from the metal show. You know? <laughs> him up there in old, old Eddie Trunk would be with him. And he'd be like, don't you like Black Sabbath? And they'd all say, yeah, I do like Black Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And I'm at, at, at my home going, I'm a big fan of Black Sabbath, too, because of the whole Satan devil thing. <laughs> You know, turn yourself over, you know, rock. I take these two fingers and I put them up high and like they look like they're devil horns. And I just drop it down for the white power. What? Funny, uh -huh. no. So you're fine with the devil against white people. Just saying we've got a lot of accomplishments, too. You know? I mean, first of all, the Nina and the Penta. Not even to mention the Santa Maria. I mean, that was a that was a three boats that just came across the ocean. You know, <laughs> Christopher Columbus looked out that son of a bitch and goes, "What the hell's that? I won't call it an Indian." <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's uh, Detroit uh, kicking it out, kicking just out. Mm -hmm. You know, You're kicking Kick out, out the jams, kicking out the jams in Detroit. Makes yeah. sense. Like the MC5 did. Go to the iBang right now. Comedian of the Year. Comedy the Movie of the Year. We love you. Enjoy Christmas. Let's jump into this now, Gail. The year end. Yes, and now uh, we're going to have a listen to some comedians picking their breakout comedian of next year. And now, the funniest comedians working today tell us who they think will be the breakout star of 2020. Let's kick this off with our good buddy, Sypha Sounds. He just DJed and did an incredible job for us at our big Thanksgiving show. But you can also check out the podcast he does with Mike Fenoya, Lose to the Cruise. Let's see who he picks as the breakout comedian of 2020. I think breakout star 2020 is going to be the one and only Jessica Kirsten. Jessica is one of the funniest comics. I literally, anytime I host a comedy show and she's on the show, I stay and watch her every time, and I laugh continuously. So funny, so clever. Uh, just, I think, someone who should have already been a star. So let's go, universe. Let's get her in the mix. Next up, we have Kurt Metzger. Check out his podcast, Can't Get Right, and follow him on Twitter, at Kurt Metzger, and on Instagram, at Kurt underscore Metzger, who's his breakout comedian of 2020? My pick for the breakout comedian of 2020, I'm going to say Tim Dillon. I'll tell you what sealed it to me was uh, the Epstein Temple Halloween costume. It's hilarious. I'm basing it almost solely on that. That's one of the funniest things I ever saw. All right, guys, let's go to John Rudnitsky. Who is he picking for his breakout comedian next year. I think the breakout comedian of this year is Gavin Matz. Uh, I think he's the perfect combination of uh, silly and smart, and he's just, just a real hilarious guy. He just had his Conan debut, and I think big things are coming for him. Next up, we've got the nominees for Comedian of the Year. And now... Here are your nominees for the 2019 Comedian of the Year. All right, this is the list for Comedian of the Year. Please hold your applause until the end of the list. If you applaud before that, you will be asked to leave. And you will have your non-physical award taken away from you. Oh, no. All I, I know, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is the list. Nate Bargatze, Colin Quinn, Bill Burr, Michelle Wolf, Rami Youssef, 
Gary Goldman, Joe Coy, Nikki Glazer, Dave Chappelle, and a shocker, Shane Gillis. Wow. Whoa. Like that twist ended. Yeah. <laughs> I did not see that coming. I did not think Dave Chappelle would be in this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as we, uh, here's the, the game that we always play here. Everybody from the show will kind of pick out their uh, their pick, who they think is going to win this thing. But once that name is picked, nobody else in the show can pick it. Yeah, sometimes uh, it's a heartbreaker. Yeah. Sometimes someone picks uh, your choice. But luckily, there's so many great comics this year. There's many to choose from. You could make a case for everybody in this list. Uh, I mean, obviously, Shane Gillis was probably the most talked about comedian at yeah. least from august on you know yeah that's an overnight household name yeah <laughs> uh my mom was like what do you think of that shane gillis <laughs> uh you know um you know how uh, big j and dan soder shoot their smoking thing uh, for comedy central they shot jay saying to me Hey, guess who got SNL? Him and Soder come running over. And then they say Shane Gillis. And I do, well, oh my, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then like, I don't know, a week later, all the shit started. But there was this moment that right. the three of us had the kid. <laughs> the kid. <laughs> you know? Um, it's like, imagine that uh, the scene in that, um, that thing you do where everyone's excited. Right. But then if the next scene, it was like, they're canceled. Yeah, the, the next scene is Robert De Niro just smashing the phone booth <laughs> and pushing it over. Uh, there's nothing we can do. He's gone. And there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, all right, let's start this off. Let's start it off with Earl Douglas. Earl, who is your comedian of the year? Dave Chappelle, without question. Sticks and Stones was the most talked about comedy special in terms of um, content as far as pushing everyone's buttons. Everyone really either loved it. Yeah, what was the controversy of that special? He basically went after, you know, cancel, uh, cancel culture, um, just how everyone is fickle, how everything is very, you know, the new sensitivity in comedy. He tackled it head on with no apologies, and it was funny. And... To me, that was the highlight of the year for me. I, I would make the case for this. Do we not think Dave Chappelle is almost too big to get this award? You know what I mean? Like, at a certain point, you know what I mean? Like, if Jerry Seinfeld wins Comedian of the Year, you know, there's people on here that... Right, like he's... It's kind of their year, but this has been his last 25 years. Yeah, like he's up for like the Legends Lifetime Award. Lifetime Award. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just got one this year. I think he got the Mark Twain Award. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, isn't that enough, <laughs> Earl? Does he really need to beat out Nikki Glaser? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I I almost think at a, at a certain point you got to say... You got your awards. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Go your for success. an Oscar. Go for an Oscar now. Yeah. You know? What do you need another non physical award for? <laughs> I know it's not like you can put it up on your mantle. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean the actual beginning of this show just goes to show nothing matters about getting this award. It's not even an award. It's a <laughs> small glimpse in time. Uh but ob obviously uh Chappelle is an easy choice for I'm going to say a safe bet. You know what I mean? A, a, a guy who's not really willing to get out there and put his opinion there. That's our Earl Douglas. It's a bet on black. Literally. Dude, and dude. Well, okay. No fucking racism, okay? It's the year-end non-physical awards. <laughs> Vito, what do you got? I'm going with Joe Coy. I feel like Joe Coy just had a monster year. Like, just ticket sales alone... The Chase Center, where the Warriors are going to play, he sold out two shows. He did his special for Netflix in Hawaii at this basketball arena. Um, and he's doing shows at Radio City in the Forum, and I feel like he's just always working and uh, always pushing. You're, yeah, but you haven't brought up his humor at all. It's all numbers, 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 numbers. And that's the way these Zoomers are, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Why? What are you, a calculator? Why wouldn't you talk about 
the man's company. At least Earl did that much. Yeah. But mm. Joe Coy, of course, is uh, a massive a massive act right now and you might be saying to yourself hey did you get an unmask with him right before that happened oh i did that's interesting <laughs> that you would say that thank you for acknowledging <laughs> yeah joe coya obviously in the running and i mean uh, he has worked so hard for so long but is truly an established guy now, Joe Coy. You could go and vote on any of this stuff up on the iBank. Comedian of the Year is the first, and one could make the argument, most important award. Gail, who do you have for Comedian of the Year? Uh, I have a comic who I've heard you refer to as one of the hardest working stand-ups out there. Well, um, I'm not up for this award. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quoting you. Like yes. this is like on the the book jacket yeah. kind of okay, thing. Yeah. Okay, good. Um but uh she had an incredible year. Uh her appearance on the Bruce Willis roast, her special banging, and uh she's going to be hosting Blind Date, and that's Nikki Glaser. I think had a monster year, and I think yeah. she's the comedian of 2019. She is either on stage, on the radio, or in a plane. I mean, yes. she's just moving she's like a shark. Always working. Uh, I think people have just like a tremendous amount of respect for her. Uh, she's very funny. Now, uh, what's Blind Date? Because I haven't heard about this yet. So it's a uh, it's an old show, but she's going to be hosting the revival of the uh -huh. show. So it's going to be on yeah. uh, Bravo. Okay, yeah. so it's a dating show. Yeah, it was the one. Remember the one where they'd go on a date and you'd get like the pop up video type stuff when right. they were on their date. None of this. None of this do I remember. <laughs> like, they'd be on a date, and then, like, a little bubble would come up, and it would be like, he's thinking about pasta and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Roasted. It's got to be better than that, I'm sure. <laughs> well, good for you, uh, Nikki. That's um, exciting. And she seems to, you know, be perfect for the dating world. She does, you know? yeah. She's that's her wheelhouse, for sure. Never found anyone, did she? Huh? <laughs> Career no. gal. Career gal, I like to say. Uh, obviously, breakout year for Nikki Glazer. Uh, Chris, what do you got? I'm giving Comedian of the Year to Mr. Bill Burr. Mm. He had his special out this year. And not only is he's also in The Mandalorian, but he also is producing other comedian specials like Jessica Kirsten. For that, I give him Comedian of the Year. <laughs> that was very, very good. Oh, wow. Yeah, so was... we can't even comment on it? <laughs> yeah. It's not up to the voters? No, it is up to me Hate personally. my no, you... music. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, Bill Burr is a giant force in, in comedy, and uh, he's, um, you know, the last time I talked to Dice, Dice says that Burr was becoming like what Rodney Dangerfield was doing in the 80s of trying to present young comedians to, you know, an unsuspecting public. He's he's all over the place right now, and a cigar smoker, and who doesn't, you know, that gets mm -hmm. extra credit. <laughs> Uh, any of these folks could uh, win Comedian of the Year. Go over to the iBang um, and uh, your chance. Gary Goldman had a, a, a huge breakout Massive, year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Michelle Wolf is as strong as can be. Uh, you know, I, I brought up Shane earlier. The interesting thing about Shane is he handled it with a lot of grace. You know what I mean? Like, they're. they're it seems like no one in the industry is mad at him. You know, he could have been the asshole kid when this happened to him, but he was just like, you know, back to doing sets right away. Uh, and um, I know for a fact a lot of major comedians are behind him, even if they're not saying it publicly. R Rami Youssef, fantastic year. Uh, Nate Bargatze is Probably the hottest comedian in the country right yeah. now. Uh, a very, very big person in the industry said to me, uh, "I, uh, he's the only person I'm paying attention to right now. I just love him. And I said, you know, the thing about Nate is you can't even steal his jokes. You know what I mean? Like everything about him is just yes. his timing, his personality, his point of view. I don't know if there's anybody out there as comfortable in their own skin as he is. And I think like his cadence, like his delivery is maybe one of the best out there. It's so funny. So having uh, thrown it out to everybody, I'm going to make my pick. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, once again, for me, it's Colin Quinn. Colin Quinn has just been weirdly successful and weirdly almost unappreciated at the same time. Uh, I don't stop thinking about 
red state, uh, blue state. Be- Such a good special. And because the thing of let's break up the government. I mean, we sit around and we talk about, you know, uh, you know, Earl was saying that Chappelle does this thing that's supposed to be so edgy. Colin is, is serious. You know what I mean? Like, he's not doing it. He goes, this thing doesn't work right. anymore. We had a long run. <laughs> we need to break it up and let everybody go their own way. And he's serious. And I find myself watching the news every day uh, thinking about that special because uh, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense here. So, yes, I know Joe Coy did the numbers. I get <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Earl, I get it. Dave Chappelle, let's try to be as cool as we can and like him. Gail, you played the woman's card. As Someone perfectly. has to. <laughs> oh, Chris, falling in line behind Bill Burr. Not everybody else in comedy is doing that right now. But you take a daring person like myself who is willing to say, hey, stop the train and let's take a look at this gentleman of a certain age. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Who's bringing apart uh, not only com- uh, comedy, but wisdom. Colin Quinn, lock it up. <laughs> Hit my music. <laughs> but let's be honest here. Anybody could win this. This is, uh, this is, a, I, I just worry if Gary Goldman doesn't win it. You know what I mean? I know, yeah. I don't want him to spiral. I know. Throw I don't a vote in for spiral. him. And you can do that yeah. at the iBang dot com head over uh pick your comedian of the year uh and now let's uh take a listen to some more comedians picking their breakout comedian of 2020 and now the funniest comedians working today tell us who they think will be the breakout star of 2020 This next comedian, you can uh, go to creepstour.com to see all of their upcoming dates. It's Jim Florentine picking his breakout comedian of 2020. My breakthrough comedian for 2020 is Kevin Brennan. I feel like Kevin's going to have a positive attitude. His New Year's resolution, he's going to be nice to people, and he's going to be friendly, and he's going to be very nice and upbeat on stage. So I'm picking Kevin Brennan as my breakout comedian for 2020 all positive vibes from that man it's seton smith at seton smith on twitter and instagram let's see who he picks as his breakout comedian for next year the breakout artist for this 2020 year is uh i would say eagle wit (laughs) i don't even know if he's gonna be that big yet i know he's gonna be big soon because he's just young funny interesting and uh, I don't know. I just enjoy watching him every time he's on stage. Whatever ignorant shit he's saying, I'm digging it. So um, I'm going to throw him out there. Next up, we've got our good buddy, Pete Lee. We lost him to the West Coast. We miss him so much. Uh, follow him at Pete Lee Tweets. Let's see who he's picking for the breakout comedian of 2020. My breakout comedian pick of the year, her name is Becky Robinson. She's not a New York comedian, but she's an L.A. comedian. But you will probably see her soon in the next season of Saturday Night Live. She does characters. She does stand-up. She's one of the funniest people. And if you haven't heard of her yet, you will, because she's amazing. Coming up next, it's the category Best Comedy Movie of 2019. Head over to the iBang and put in your vote. Here are your nominees for the 2019 Comedy Movie of the Year. All right, here is your list of the comedy movies of the year. And yes, it's a thin, thin list. There's no doubt about it. Uh, But at least they're there. You know what I mean? Like, for this non-physical award... Uh, I think uh, a lot of these people put in the work that I would only reward them with a non-physical award. <laughs> Here is your list. Please hold your applause until the end. Blazing Saddles. Oh. <laughs> picking that. All right, here is your list. <laughs> Book Smart. Good Boys. Dolomite is my name. Long Shot. Always be my maybe. Where'd you go, Bernadette? Late night. Jojo Rabbit. Mr. America. 
And of course, wine country. This is a this is a thin list, as you yeah. said. Um, so I'm sure anyone is excited to go first well, to claim their I'm gonna, prize. I'm gonna. I I'll just say this. I've heard great ba- things about this, but I haven't seen this movie, which is terrible to be on the panel mm-hmm. and have not seen the movie. But remember this: my vote is counts just as much as any ham and egg are out there. Yes. So yeah. if you saw this movie, and if you want to champion it. You know, let your friends know. But this Jojo Rabbit, when I heard the thing about a kid that is uh, friends with a pretend Hitler, I'm like, I can't imagine. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm not Mel Brooks. I'm not going to be able to make this work. But I hear wonderful things about it. I haven't seen it. On premise, that should be your pick then. Uh, Maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, No, I wouldn't. I I hated the premise, but the fact that people are (laughs) raving about it, uh, and it's another thing that ScarJo's in. This is a big year for ScarJo. So I'll go first this time. I saw this movie, and I thought it was one I wouldn't like. It's another teen movie. It's another kind of last day of school movie. It's a kind of, hey, we're not going to be buddies after this. And it was really strong, great jokes, book smart is adorable yeah it's a really really good movie yeah directed by olivia wilde i believe that was her first uh her debut yeah as i director well i think she first did girls going wild and now oh right uh, yeah and that was about herself <laughs> this is a step up yeah it is it, you know <laughs> uh but uh yeah uh I, first of all i didn't even know that she directed mm-hmm. until you told me right now now i have to just talk to my assistant about where my notes have been because that's something I should have brought up. But it's uh, very, very funny. I can't think of the star's name. Beanie Feldstein? She's unbelievable. She's so great. Yeah, she's unbelievable. And it was one of those things where you're like, okay, this kid's going to be around for another 20, 30 years. Yeah, she was absolutely fantastic in it. There's a really, you know, even some of the supporting characters, Lisa Kudrow, Will Forte, yeah. Jason Sudeikis. It's a really, really great movie. Um, but the kids hold it up. I mean, the yes. kids prop this movie up all the way against, uh, you know. And of course, could this movie come out in the 80s? Yeah, but mm-hmm. you see that the tropes have changed a little bit. I know what it's like. I was book smart you know everybody was jealous of my brain so i was class president (laughs) obviously i was way more freak than geek but uh but when you can relate to something that you have nothing in common with i think it's great yeah you know I saw it in theaters, and this... Th- how many theaters? I saw it in one theater. <laughs> okay, because the way you let on. I saw yeah. it in a theater, yeah. and uh, there was this woman, like, two seats over from me. And I liked the movie, but, like, it wasn't anything crazy to me. And this woman, two seats over, like, it hit her really hard. And I looked over, and she was sitting holding a Heineken, just crying at the end of the movie. Hey, the first of all, person? Uh, Vito, this was my time, and <laughs> for you to tell this weird personal story <laughs> this person you're describing is a drunk <laughs> they're, they're drinking probably their and... life is ruined yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> um but i will say i did have that moment where it to me it was a very fun you know uh funny movie uh and then all of a sudden it had me thinking about my best friend from high school and we don't yeah. see each other anymore we don't stay in contact and you're like at one time that's the love of your life is yes. your best friend you do everything together that's that's the the first love of your life is that yeah. best friend more than your first sexual partner absolutely in my case it was the exact same person <laughs> earl douglas for me it was dolomite is my name Big comeback for Eddie Murphy, big comeback for Craig Brewer, uh, great supporting cast. Um, Divine Joy Randolph has a breakout role as Lady Reed. Um, Wesley Snipes is fantastic in it. And then you got um, Craig Robinson and Mike Epps in supporting roles. This was. Are you just going to read the IMDb? Who's <laughs> <laughs> the grip? I will tell you this I, I'm a giant fan of Eddie Murphy's. And I love the Dolomite movies. You know, that was like literally my time. I love the story. It somehow didn't all come together for me. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be an Oscar winning thing for Eddie Murphy. But I don't know if he ever became that guy. You know what I mean? He was kind of more like, oh, we're seeing Eddie Murphy again. But you didn't, you didn't really think of him as this outsider, you know? Right. 
Well, I thought more of like, you know, he looked like he gained weight for a role because Rui Ray Moore was a little paunchy. And he kind of kept. But did you ever had come out of your mind that it was Eddie Murphy that you were watching a movie? Oh, it was clearly Eddie. Yeah, was, that's, was clear. that was the problem for me. I really wanted to be this other thing, and uh, but the story's. I mean, the story itself, that thing of hey, we're going to make our own show and put it out ourselves. I mean, the weird thing about this movie is it's a 1930s movie. It's a 1920s movie. You know that thing of we're. Uh, we're taking over the barn, we're putting on this show, and oh, look, the crowds have showed up for it. We're a hit. I mean, this is as old as show business. So uh, um, maybe if I would have saw it in the theater, it might have been a little different. Uh, there could have been a an overweight woman crying and drinking <laughs> next to me. But... You mean you see it in theaters? Yeah, Multiple. theaters, <laughs> many, many theaters. Gail, who do you pick? Um... You know, this was not the strongest year for comedy movies. I thought it was. That appa um, apparently you haven't seen Wine Country. And uh, well, I did see it. Uh, I haven't seen all of these movies, so I'm going to have to pick Wine Country. Uh, it's directed by Amy Poehler, and don't we love her? Yeah, I mean, I love yeah, she's, her. She's great. Tina Fey, Maya Rudolph, Rachel Dratch, Anna Gasteyer. I love all of these people. I'm very happy for them <laughs> and what they've accomplished. Jason Schwartzman is always funny. You know what? I think this is a, a, a step in the right direction for women because, you know, Adam Sandler and Elvis Presley came up with, let's go to a beautiful location and bring our friends. Yes. And it's like a vacation. And that's that's what this movie is. I think is. they had a lot of fun shooting this movie. Yeah. It looks like they did. Um, I kind of liked the look of it. It was kind of like a softcore porn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By the way, you know who loves this movie is your Aunt Robin. Yeah, so this sure. is this is the movie. You know how we have teen movies? This could be the movie for a woman of a certain age. Who's Definitely. Ready to reboot. And honestly, I think it would it would be a lot of fun to watch with your mom or your aunt or your grandmother. Yeah. It would be like a fun movie. But it's like, also, like, it's a little edgy, too. Yeah. So, you know, you guys are going to have fun with it. So, Wine Country is my pick. Uh, Vito, what do you got? I'm going for another, like flashback to a childhood movie it's good boys um i really wasn't that interested in seeing it and then ron you said something before it came out it's like um that a lot of the movies like super bad and stuff are about seem too late in life where you've already learned about all this shit and you it's weird that like super bad is about guys learning how to drink and party right when this is the age so i went into yeah. it thinking that's that's what I wanted to see. And it's funny. And it took a turn that really fucking hit me hard the way Booksmart hit you. Where... And that drunk woman. And... <laughs> that drunk woman. <laughs> Wish she was here. It was me. Okay? I'll say it. That was me drinking that high. You know, I have to say, Vito, I watched this movie at home. I didn't go out to theaters. And when it started, I'm like, okay, a little bit of hack joke. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I did think these kids would know what marital aids were. You know what I mean? <laughs> but when it took the turn, you are forced to go back in the way Gail talked about and think about your earliest friends. So this is, it almost took that stand by me kind of thing. And it it is good. It's really a good movie. Now, the thing is, it's a kid's movie that's not for kids. That's yeah. the, it's the kids' movies for adults, which has always been Jeffrey Epstein's favorite movies. Uh, I believe he gave it uh, four stars. Um, yeah. The, you know what? All these movies are kind of cute and sweet for what they are. Yeah. You know, there's no doubt about it. Chris Stanley? Yes. I have no idea. I haven't heard you talk about a movie this year. I don't know who you're going to pick. This movie um, wasn't really in theaters. It was more of a streaming option on YouTube. But that's Mr. America, Tim Heidecker, where it's a mockumentary where Tim it's Tim Heidecker, but he's playing a different version of himself, and he's running for DA of San Bernardino County. And he plays the scumbag version of himself, in the, and he's trying to be a DA even though not being a lawyer. Wait, or, this is on YouTube? It's on You, you can rent it on YouTube, yeah. Oh, you can rent it on YouTube because yeah. I was going to say I don't think you can be eligible for this. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have uh, not only uh, d do I know nothing about. I hadn't even heard about it before this moment. Yeah, yeah, it was like based off like a web series he was doing, and they made a feature film out of it, and they released it on streaming. Yeah, I want to see. I don't I know love... if I'd call it a feature film if it's on YouTube. 
Did it hit festivals? It did hit festivals, yes. Okay, now we're on to something. Mm-hmm. All right, Good Vito, call. you pulled them out of the mud. I like it. <laughs> uh, and you loved it. I loved it. It's yeah. a mockumentary. It's really the only person that is Tim Heidecker. They did the Tim and Eric thing where they hired just like local weirdo actors from like uh-huh. around the San Bernardino and the Valley. Let's not judge them. Sorry, I mean, you're, right, you're right. You're yeah. right. And it's very funny. It's very Tim Heidecker. That's my pick for comedian, uh, movie of the year. <laughs> comedian of the year. <laughs> All right, we're going to go back and change oh, shit. the last thing that Tim we Heidecker. have. <laughs> Tim Heidecker does, does, you know, whatever he wants. That's yeah. the, that is the truth. And uh, he is an inc- incredibly funny guy. I just haven't seen this. Yeah, I'm going to have to see it now that you I all should. Uh, know yeah. it exists. <laughs> I definitely want to see it. All right, so... Uh, I think this one could go in any direction. I'm going to be surprised about who the listeners pick. Go over to the iBank and um, pick who you think will win comedy of uh, comedy movie of the year. Do any of you guys think that you pick the one that the the listeners are going to pick? Nope. Nobody? I don't think enough people have seen Tim Dodgers from America. I don't think one of these is like a standout. No, this is not. You uh, know. We don't have, it's not one of those years where you're like, oh, this was the big broad comedy movie. I guess, I don't think any of these movies were particularly successful or successful no. at all. No. You know? No. Not I mean, we've talked about this uh, before, but like, we didn't have that kind of uh, over the top big summer comedy movie. Like uh, They've almost disappeared, but maybe after this vote. It'll be back. Yes. You know? Go to the interrobang.com and cast your vote for best comedy movie of 2019. The Jason Ellis Show. We are joined by a special guest. This is a godlike fan. Well, God-like. it does stand for the god of all Texas and your masters of menace. Goat in your mall. I have to assume everybody's seen Quack Like a Duck. One of the greatest songs ever written, in my opinion. We do have a new album coming out. Lyrically, what sorts of themes are you exploring this time around? Um, anal. Nice. <laughs> Live, 5 p.m. East, replay at 5 p.m. West, and on demand anytime. Come on. Let's go. Country. Body like a back road. To rock. Hip hop. Hotline bling. To pop. Shake it off. Shake it off. Serious XM channels like The Highway, Octane, Hip Hop Nation, and Hits One close out the decade with countdowns dedicated to the top tracks of the 2010s. Hear them all on the Sirius XM app, now included free for most subscribers. Just download it today and tap for you. Don't believe me, just watch. Need help with your holiday shopping list this year? Sirius XM can save you money and time while helping you find the perfect gifts. Visit SiriusXM.com slash gift ideas and check out the holiday gift guide. It's filled with gift ideas perfect for anyone on your list and special offers too. The holiday gift guide is brought to you in part by Ring. It's doorbell season. No matter where the holidays take you, you're always at home with a Ring video doorbell. Check out SiriusXM.com slash gift ideas to learn more. Are you a business owner who needs working capital to help grow and support your business? Do you know where the money is going to come from? Have you been turned down from a local bank? If you need working capital and need it now, call Capitus. We provide up to $1 million in alternative financing to retailers, restaurants, hotels, and hundreds of different types of businesses. Unlike getting financing through a bank, our unique financing services are very flexible with repayment plans customized to meet your needs. Our underwriting is extremely fast, allowing approval in as little as one day. It's totally stress-free. If you've been in business for at least a year, have an annual revenue of 150000 or more with a minimum credit score of 550, pick up the phone and call now for a free no-obligation consultation to see what you qualify for. Dial 800-950-3788. 800-950-3788. That's 800-950-3788. Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with ovarian cancer after regular use of Johnson & Johnson baby powder? You may be entitled to compensation. Call 800-995-8188. That's 800-995-8188. A December 2018 Reuters news report states that from 1971 to the early 2000s, 
Johnson & Johnson was aware their raw talcum and finished powders sometimes tested positive for small amounts of asbestos, but did not disclose it to regulators or the public. The article cited numerous internal company memos, reports, and other documents disclosed during talc lawsuits. As of April 2019, Johnson & Johnson is facing over 11,000 lawsuits, claiming studies have linked Johnson's baby powder to ovarian cancer. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer after regular use of Johnson & Johnson baby powder for feminine hygiene purposes, you may be entitled to compensation. Call 800-995-8188. That's 800-995-8188 for a free case review. Want a great deal? Buy any four five-hour energy shots for just $8.88 now at Love's Travel Stops. Five-hour energy gives you the alert, energized feeling you need to sail through your day. It works fast, it works long, it tastes good, and with zero sugar and four calories, there's nothing holding you back. Fits your pocket, fits your backpack, and with four for $8.88 pricing at Love's Travel Stops, it fits your budget. Five-hour energy. Energy on the go. See store for details. Offer ends December 31st. Deck the halls on Christmas Day with the biggest stars in the NBA. Highlighted by the showdown in L.A. When LeBron James and the Lakers take on Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. Three-pointer by LeBron. That's good! Knockout punch by LeBron James! A stocking full of action tips off at noon Eastern with the reigning NBA champion Raptors hosting the Celtics. Hear every minute of the holiday hoops on NBA Radio. Sirius 207, XM86. Offer not valid in all states or where prohibited by law. Loans are subject to lender approval. See website for details. Need cash but have bad credit or maxed out cards? Now you can get a personal loan for up to five grand, whatever your credit, with no paperwork. LendGenius.com is one of the nation's largest personal loan networks. If you have a checking account and a regular income source, you can get cash in your account as soon as tomorrow. Type this into your smartphone or computer address bar. www.LendGenius.com That's LendGenius.com LendGenius.com Message and data rates may apply. Guys, got hair loss? I know what you're thinking. Should I shave my head? Comb it over? Wear a hat? Just stop. This isn't 1970. Keep your hair and your confidence because Bosley, America's number one hair restoration expert, can give you your real, natural-looking hair back permanently. They're giving away an absolutely free information kit and a free gift card to everyone who texts EASY33 to 85850. Dude, you don't have to look like your dad because this isn't your dad's hair loss treatment. People all over the country trust Bosley because they use the latest technology to give you your real hair back. You wash it. You cut it. It's your own real, naturally growing hair. And the best part, Bosley's permanent solution is protected by the Bosley Guarantee. Let them show you for free how awesome your hair could look with an absolutely free information kit and a gift card for $250 off. Text EASY33 to 85850. That's E-A-S-Y-33 to 85850. I'm Andy Solomon. The holiday shopping countdown is on, and for a limited time only, Xbox has some game-changing last-minute deals. Barb Schwabe of Xbox has the details. This holiday is the perfect time to get into gaming with Xbox. And starting now until December 25th, get $100 off any Xbox One S console. And nothing pairs more perfectly with your console than Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which includes all the benefits of Xbox Live Gold, plus over 100 high-quality console and PC games for one low monthly price. And today, buy three months of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate before December 28th and get three additional months free. But that's not all. Xbox One X has another deal running past Christmas. You can also save up to $150 off the Xbox One X console of your choice until December 28th with 40% more power than any other console in true 4K gaming. Check out these offers at participating retailers. What's a Zoom room? It's what your conference room is meant to be. With flawless video and audio conferencing, instant wireless content sharing from any device, and just one tap of a button to start a meeting. Any space can easily become a modern, simple-to-use Zoom room. From huddle rooms to executive offices to huge training rooms. And whether you have a few rooms or a few thousand, Zoom Rooms is effortlessly scalable. Sign up online for a free 30-day trial of Zoom Rooms and meet happy with Zoom. Faction Talk 103, it's the Bennington Show. Hey, have you been following that story of that 
I don't know. They have a reality show, and it's a guy who has a wife, but you always think that he's gay. Oh, yeah. The, oh, the southern house, guy? The house. Chrisley. Chrisley knows best. Chrisley knows best. Now, have you heard any of this story? Is this the, like, he's very southern guy? Yeah. So okay. he's very southern. He's know. always like, you better tell your mama not to tell me what to do. Yeah. All right, we're going to settle this in a golf cart race. You know, there's always <laughs> something <laughs> crazy like a normal family that would. they set up, yeah. you know? So... um for no apparent reason, he'll be like, well, I've decided the whole family is going disco skating on Saturday. What the heck? You know, and like you you literally are always saying with him, does he know or does his family know? Yeah. So they're in some bullshit trouble. Apparently, they've uh, got, you know, some kind of tax avoidance that they did. And it isn't even like, oh, you forgot to pay or you didn't pay. Like they had falsified records, went to banks, got fucking loans. I mean, they went really fucking deep. Yeah. Shit, like, everybody like knows you'd somebody. Like, you be better off just not paying your taxes with the, like, yes. absurdity that they went yeah. through. Yeah, because then you could go, well, why didn't you pay your taxes? And you're like, oh, uh, I thought you I know, did everybody it. Would, Sorry. You know, everybody can understand that. Yeah. Everybody has uh, had a friend in that kind of trouble, and you're just going, why don't you keep up with it? But they were really doing bizarre shit, <laughs> crazy shit. I mean, who needs a $4 million loan? First of all, you got a fucking TV show. That's not enough. Because I don't know what he does. Yeah. I guess he flips houses. He's on TV. Yeah. Or he Must judges be. people's cakes. So, all right. So that's all fucking weird enough. Then his daughter is in it. And they said if... She, she told the authorities that if she didn't get along with, the, uh, she didn't go along with their lies, that they were going to release her sex tape. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. You want your sex tape to get out there? Because I'll fucking do it in a heartbeat. Jesus. And I'm just like, why isn't this a Danny McBride TV show? <laughs> Did you guys watch the first uh, yes. Righteous Gemstones? Yeah. It was great. It's fucking nuts, right? It's and it's crazy. I, I don't McBride. know because it's big religion. I don't know if you could even parody that. You know what right, because I mean? it's big. It's big enough. It's just crazy. The daughter's sex tape also, I think, is with someone from The Bachelor. Like I think she... you want me to release that Bachelor <laughs> sex tape? You take an ain on you had a butt plug. You got a rose, all right. <laughs> <laughs> he was knee deep into your rose, <laughs> but that's how they are. I mean, he's fucking. So, this is. I hope they're recording this for the next Chrisley's uh, special year. Yeah, this is really... Um... Beats, don't want to wake people up in there. I know you got a lot going on. Uh, yeah. And they've taken it up. Forget everybody else. They're the best. Yeah. But, I, I mean, the 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 extorting your own daughter thing? I mean, Just what do the, what you're told. What is the point of that? Like, what was I guess this? she was going to drop the truth bomb. And then yeah. he thought, what can I do to you? And make a little extra bread for myself <laughs> from I mean, the daughter. How did man... they get the tape? And why would somebody tape that? Apparently, the brother, her brother, I think, bought the tape. And but who taped what it? What the fuck is happening? That I mean, I we're know. fucking smart enough at this point. You don't tape yourself if you're famous. You know, yeah, it's enough of them were going out there. Yeah, I don't know who taped it, but the family bought it, and then just to use it against the daughter. Well. It's official. Your tape's gone out this week. No! No, Dad! Unless you do a tandem parachute with the whole family this I'm tired of living like this. Living the lie. <laughs> yeah, she literally said almost the same thing. She's like, I can't fucking take it anymore. I'm yeah, not a getting, sideshow freak. We're getting another daughter next season. <laughs> Big, beautiful titties. <laughs> Gonna have everybody watching. <laughs> What is his job? Is he a real estate guy? I think he owns, I, I got to check into it, but I think he owns like Targets and Walmarts and shit. But why did he end up on television? What was the reason he was on That's television? That's what I can't understand. He's pretty entertaining. He's extorting his own daughter. I've seen, I've never seen the show in full. I've seen pieces of it and I've seen clips here and That's there. That's how you see reality shows. And it shows. seems nuts to me. Please. And yes, I was very confused about, he like, his background, like I didn't understand why this gay man was calling her his wife. It was yes. very confusing. It's been the most confusing thing since Paul Schaefer. <laughs> and I'm bringing my wife with me, if that's okay. <laughs> he did get his money from real estate. 
All right, so the Walmart thing was a lie. Was, yeah, I have no idea why. I'm, I'm convinced in my head that this guy owns Target. You know and why? Because there was a shooting there a couple weeks ago. Is that why your head? You don't is want there? to drop it. Chrisley knows best. Is this his first name or last? I'm going to try to get Chrisley on the Creeps with Kids tour. Oh, that would be great. Bobby was giving me like, oh, I want you to do this. I want you to do this podcast and promote. I go like this. Bobby, I signed up for a tour, not a chore. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a tour manager or a chore manager? I'm neither. Because <laughs> you're starting a bore manager. <laughs> I'll release that sex tape on you, Bobby. No, Daddy! <laughs> Please! All right, I'm pressing send. Can I send it from my phone? <laughs> Could somebody come in here and help me with this sex tape being launched? <laughs> launched. And five, four. It's up in the satellites now. This, I'm, this I'm Team Cressley. Yeah. Is it Cressley? Cressley. Cressley is Carson Cressley. Is gay, by the way. Yeah. Out. Seven seasons. The show's been on. Yes, yeah, amazing. <laughs> it's crazy. It. I've only known this as the show. It comes on after Monday Night Raw. Like that's yeah. <laughs> is Monday Night Raw all over? All right, let's get crassly. <laughs> I'll pin every one of those bastards. <laughs> Joe, Joe in New Jersey. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Go everyone. ahead, Joe. <laughs> Welcome to Crassly Talk. Don't talk about my sex tape. <laughs> Although he uh, did make his money in real estate, he does own a bunch of grocery stores. And Piggly is- Wigglies. <laughs> <laughs> take, your, take your fingers off the fruit. <laughs> he, uh, this isn't the first kid that he's had a problem with. His oldest son had a drug problem, and uh, apparently he's like the black sheep of the family and, and uh, was disowned by his dad because of the drugs. I'm done with the meth head. Doesn't right. sell in the Midwest. Exactly. <laughs> this is off brand for us. Yeah, everything's branding. Where are the Chrisleys, God damn it! We don't do drugs. I'm trying to uh, sell two plots of land today by 12 o'clock. <laughs> That's the show. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I just closed on another plot of land. <laughs> this is TV now. How did How fucking TV get worse? <laughs> yeah. TVs get worse, they say. <laughs> and that's perfect for us. <laughs> Call me Elvis Cressley. <laughs> all right, this week we're all dressing up like Elvis, all right? Best person gets a hound dog. Is that a good, that a good show? <laughs> I'm trying to live in this way, Dad. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to upload this <laughs> no! sex tape. Why do you have that sex tape? I hope it's a three-way. <laughs> That's very, very big in our demos, in the lower demos that we need. They like to look at three-ways. <laughs> now, is it better if it's two gals and one boy or two boys and one gal? <laughs> I've seen a few seconds of the show, and he talks about uh, he talks about having sex with his wife a lot, and he'll like mention it in front of his kids. Yeah, we only do anal, <laughs> and I make her put on a Burt Reynolds <laughs> toupee. <laughs> I can only come if I'm looking at Burt Reynolds movies from the 1970s. I mean, the idea that he talks about sex with his wife, something no other married man does, by yeah. the way, none. Uh, Guess what we had last night? <laughs> intercourse. <laughs> Marital intercourse. <laughs> Brian from PA. Brian? Bye, Brian. Bye, Brian. Sorry, Brian. Bye, Brian. I was talking to Flat over the weekend, and I'm trying to think what this thing he told me to buy. Because he's saying, um, hey, have you seen Jimmy Schubert's new thing? And I'm like, no, what channel is it on? You don't have to go to channels. And he brought up, I think it was something that Amazon sells. Okay. Well, wait, I probably have it on this thing. <laughs> so... Um, 
and he's telling me everything is free. Uh, That's cool. And he's like, do you have an uh, Android TV box? And I'm like, no. And he goes, everything's free on there. Everything that streams. And I go, it, you're stealing that. <laughs> no, dude, they want you to see it. <laughs> He's like, the networks are trying to get a buzz out on all those shows. I'm going, it's just what you're saying isn't true. So he says it's like 110 bucks. Okay. You put it on. Ronnie, you can watch everything. I just watched the Queen movie. The fucking Queen okay, movie bro. was on. <laughs> now, illegal. Well, come on in here, Vito, because you're my fucking techie boy. <laughs> Your techie boy, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I don't know. I got the fire stick, and uh, yeah, why, why, dude? All this <laughs> shit is fucking free. <laughs> uh, me and Earl are already signing up for Criterion. Oh, awesome! Why do that, man? It's fucking free with an Android. <laughs> now, Vito, is he saying anything true to me? I don't know. I mean, I haven't heard of this, but if he, I, I don't think he, he could have confused seeing the Bohemian Rhapsody movie on his TV. That doesn't seem like something you can. He must have paid for it. Yeah, it sound, <laughs> he either paid for it or it's like a hack. Well, I don't pay for anything, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Everything he gets, he says is free. He's now he doesn't pay for cable. He's what? put this thing on. He paid a hundred and ten bucks. And he watches everything for free now. This is a one-time fee. This isn't. This isn't yes. like monthly or yearly. Yeah. Just... It sounds like someone hacked a Fire Stick or a Chromecast or something, and he bought like a, a an existing piece of technology that was just hacked and using other people's accounts. It couldn't be anything else <laughs> but hacking. And I'm like, and he's like, you don't want to pay them. I go, who's going to pay? For the content, how's the content going to be paid if I'm stealing Netflix, if I'm stealing fucking Hulu, who's paying for these movies from Amazon Prime? Dude, they want you to. Don't you see that? They don't. Don't you fucking see that they're trying to get people to find out? Did you eventually that... see? Right, he has sent me something, and only with the thing of show Earl. I don't know what I'm looking at here. I'm going to say, what is that? I, this can't be the back of his TV. Because it looks like the Russian fucking space station. <laughs> now, I'm very happy to pay for a product. But I'd like to have it all under one monthly thing. Yeah. I'm, I don't like, right now I'm paying like 10 here, 12 there. And I don't even know what I'm using. I'm going to be honest to you. I might get rid of Hulu because I haven't been back there in three months. I've been paying for Hulu for years now. And I don't and thank go you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, I use Chris's Hulu as well. You guys are welcome. Well, then, you, then you're getting a lot out of it. <laughs> What's on Hulu right now I need to see? That's uh, Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. Love well, it. I'm a man, so I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> it's so good. That's the, that's the only show I know on Hulu. I use Hulu to catch up on shows I missed on like ABC or NBC. Is Hulu Man in High Castle? No, that's Amazon. Yeah, but, and we watched the first season anyway. I tried. It's all free, dude. <laughs> I hold on. Here's Mac. Mac says he's got one of these things. I bet he's going to be fucking yelling at me like <laughs> Flats was. Um, go ahead, Mac. Hey, fellas. Hey, ladies. How you doing? Uh, so the Android box, uh, basically how it works is like, you remember... Um, LimeWire or uh, Napster and all that shit. Yeah. People would buy the shit, and then they share it for free, basically. So he's That's stealing. Kind of it was a torrent. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's stealing. There's no other way to fucking shape this. The guy's stealing, but it's through a peer to peer network, so he's not really directly stealing. He's borrowing somebody else's stolen shit. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's like how torrents work. It's streaming torrents. That's, bad. That's the one you get caught on the easiest, isn't it? I think so. It's, I don't know. That's that whenever I. Like internet service provider and all that, right? So it depends on who's watching and shit. But it's really not that hard to not get caught either. But I mean, it's pretty easy to get caught too. It's a, it's a precarious situation. Yeah, I'm just gonna turn them in. <laughs> <laughs> I got a letter in the mail in high school because I torrented a Fifty Cent album that said like, it said the name of the album and it said Fifty Cent and his people. I've seen that you've done this. You're on a watch list. Don't let this happen again and delete the album. Did you delete it? No, I, I sold it to a bunch of people. 
It's really bad. Looks like you went to his house. It's even worse than just. <laughs> and like, uh, Earl's parents are friends with Fifty Cent's grandparents. Oh, late grandparents. Late, late yeah. grandparents. Sorry, yeah, Earl. they. Wait, uh, they died. <laughs> Yeah, the... Uh... Too many kids were stealing? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry. Yeah, Miss Beulah passed away a few years ago. But, mm. yeah, we used to, uh, their parent, my parents used to go to their anniversary parties, and they were sick parties. It, one was on a yacht one year. Okay. One was at Damn. the... Um, he had bought Tyson's old house in uh, Connecticut, and they had a big party there, and they watched movies. Now, was it Tyson's Chicken's old house or Mike Tyson's? <laughs> Either way, I'm impressed. It was uh, Mike Tyson's house. In, uh, he bought the Tyson house in Westport. <laughs> so here's the thing about Flats. He tried to fucking move me into an illegal thing to be part of. I'm so glad we got to the bottom of this. I didn't even need to. When something's <laughs> too fucking good, you know it's illegal. You would have been a pirate. Are you making fun of that fucking congressman? Oh, no, my God. No. You need to do a formal apology. Look, and write some do you think the media is being attacked? He's been attacked for real. So fuck everybody. <laughs> I hate that you can't. Uh, like when they try every once in a while to come back with that, they'll be like, uh, Michael Vick was the hero of the game. Oh, is that right? Because to me, the real heroes are the first responders. <laughs> well, if they can fucking play, I'll call them the hero of this game. <laughs> so that's how he's using attack now. Hey, we got to watch what we're saying when we say uh, Trump attacked the media. Because look at his eye. <laughs> that's what being attacked is. This is what my eye sounds like right now. Stop tapping your eyes. That's not eye stuff I'm tapping. <laughs> it's something else completely. But I hate when people get into that. We know who the actual heroes are. <laughs> do people he, get mad at superheroes because of that? I, they do. Do they? They go, the real heroes are much duller. Yeah, we know these aren't real. <laughs> not all heroes wear capes. But That's it's, that big thing. <laughs> you know, I can't come out at this hour and go, I killed last night, and have someone say, really? Because I'm an actual murderer. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a killer, why aren't you doing fucking 25 to life? Because I am. <laughs> I killed my mom's boyfriend. That's actual killing. Not getting laughs from people. All right. Uh, Flat says thing, his thing is called The Shield. It's pretty cool. Is he just watching The Shield? Yeah, you got No, man. You got to fucking get it. You're like an idiot paying for everything, man. When it's out there and they want you to take it, man. They're begging you. They're begging you to take it. He told me he saw the, the Oscars last week. He says that they fucking ran it through. Right, the Shield is a product, but it has to be someone's just misusing it to fucking get all the illegal shit that on there. That someone is flats. <laughs> Let's just be honest about what we're saying here. Yeah, he's definitely just getting torrents. He's booting. Yeah, because when he couldn't even tell me what network Schubert's thing was, and then, this is the other thing, he tells me, did you see Schubert's movies out? So I said, give me the name of it. It wasn't even on the front page of the IMDB. I went down so many other names. I went to the second page that he was in. That doesn't make it his movie. <laughs> Dude, Schubert's begging you to steal this. <laughs> steal everything. <laughs> Go into Denny's. Everything's fucking free. Go in the back door. <laughs> oh, he says he's trying to call in. I'm sorry, we don't have free calls. <laughs> Dude. Why don't you get, I got a free flight to Vegas. You just get inside your fucking suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> They want you to do that. Yeah, they're begging you. They like it. They the like it. want that. <laughs> <laughs> Flat, when you call in, you don't call my phone. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm going to have them call you then, all right? All right. <laughs> Everybody, please hang up. I would like so though, flats can call if our number was just your cell phone number. <laughs> fucking flats is the only person left on the planet who still admires Alex Smith's fucking foot. 
It's like, I would love to have a foot like that. Oh, are you stealing fucking cable? Is that your deal? No. Did you climb up a pole and run a cable into your fucking apartment? You using the shield? Is that your thing? Hey, this is, uh, I th I'm only going to ask you giant fans. The shit that Jerry Rice was running on Eli Manning. <laughs> Fucking dick. He just, he just said, yeah. He, uh, he was on a radio show. The radio show asked him about Eli Manning when he thinks of him, if they, if he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's like, no. No, he's not going to be in the Hall of Fame. Essentially said that he's not a good enough uh, football player. Like, the stats aren't there. He has two rings, but he does not belong in the Hall of Fame. Mean. They Fucking keep man. using Jim Plunkett as the guy who won two rings, as if Jim Plunkett doesn't fucking belong there. Yeah. Now, Earl's a Jets fan. Earl, do you put Eli in the Hall of Fame? I would put Eli in the Hall of Fame. I would put it's Eli a, in the a Hall of Fame. He's had a Hall of Fame career. And they're like, just because he's played long, I'm like, yeah, that's part of the accomplishment. Yeah, he's fucking stayed healthy for a long, long Very time. Very healthy. Yeah. I've never even seen the fucker limping. It's like he's had a good fucking O-line for the last decade. No, he's he gets hit all the time. He's shit kicked out of him. He's, un he's unbreakable. <laughs> <laughs> and he beat the fucking 18 and 0. <laughs> now I know why I'm here, Eli, to be your exact opposite. And this is my sidekick, blind side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the movie and TV thief, Flathead. Flats. Hey, brother. We found did, out. Uh, did you get yourself a box yet? No, man. I don't want to end up in fucking trouble. <laughs> You don't get in trouble. Amazon <laughs> sells this, and so does eBay. It's called the 4K HDR Android TV box, and it's called the Shield. Oh, yeah, look. Any, the box isn't anything? going to get in trouble. What's going to get you in trouble is bypassing these streaming services to get the Falcon stolen movies that you're enjoying. Well, they, they put everything out there. The box is just like an antenna and picks up. But when here's they, who doesn't put like, it out there. HBO, Netflix, Netflix. They, they do the they, HBO streaming. And I know, but streaming. they're, they're all, stealing they're the there. the stream that you're watching is being stole. Okay, it's a pirate that, stream. Son, they go ahead when the first episode airs on TV. They will put all 13 episodes on the box. I can I can binge. It's watch not on the box. Episodes. You just admit it. You're stealing it. It's an antenna picking up a bad anything. signal. I'm not stealing anything. My You're just sitting I'm at your up house. To the Wi-Fi. It's just being I, nice. I, I put in a channel. It comes up, and I watch whatever, whatever I want. Movies at the theater, games. I can play games. And it's perfectly <laughs> Why would, legal. All right, think for a perfectly. second, Flat. A movie this for is, the theater in New York right now is twenty bucks a fucking ticket, right? <laughs> Why would they give you free fucking those movies free to watch in your house? His word of mouth, I guess. They. Well, somebody's putting it out there. Yes, I don't know. exactly. <laughs> Somebody is not it. the right person. I can watch everything, <laughs> and, it's, and it's free. Sporting. All right, and, just and so I'm going to say this to you: just because you can doesn't mean that you should. Well, it's Wi-Fi. You just say Wi-Fi <laughs> as if that's a fucking helpful it's thing. It's your Wi-Fi account. <laughs> That's being provided by the cable companies, and the box is using your Wi-Fi to pick up an illegal stream of fucking Bremen Rhapsody or Look, whatever. There's nothing illegal Bremen. about it. I live in a high-rise, and the building <laughs> has their own uh, Wi-Fi. I use theirs. <laughs> the Wi-Fi doesn't play into this. There's an illegal stream. Yes. And I you are, you they're fucking the looking at it. That's bootleg. It's not bootleg. This is why cable's losing a million customers a month. Yes, exactly. <laughs> people because stealing. people are stealing it. Hold on. It's the same thing as the fire stick, except this is the latest technology. You no longer have to pay. It's like having – the difference is like having an AOL account and paying or having a Gmail account and not paying. That it's doesn't <laughs> – no. Who's paying for an AOL email account? They're free. <laughs> you can just go to AOL.com and get an AOL account right now. I have my – legally. I have well, my fucking stick, right? I could Ill illegally go places and steal. I don't. I could You're do not what, stealing what? anything. You pay for the box. Gives you the license to, to steal. The There's a license to steal. 
<laughs> this is all illegal. This is Napster all over again. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think so. I don't think <laughs> Why so. Why not? I'm going to send you the specs on the box. They sent you a picture of the box. I, I, no one cares about the box. <laughs> we all know what the box is capable of doing. It's capable of letting you get fucking illegal shit and put it on your TV for free. That's what the cat box does. Great. Right, now there's a paper trail that links you to this. <laughs> shit. It's called the the link. Link. <laughs> And then make a perfect Christmas gift. Yeah. <laughs> Here. And you can even fucking outlaw. On it. <laughs> you can steal stuff on your computer, too. You can steal stuff anywhere. This Most of us stealing. will think to themselves, that's not right. It's not stealing, man. They sell the box in stores. Yes, but then people are using the box that is a legal device, apparently, to do illegal shit with. Oh, you plug it in, put it on your Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, my That's God, you Grandma, you're crazy. All right, so I plug it in. <laughs> you plug it in. Yes, yeah, I and set up the wi Pick it up to your Wi-Fi. <laughs> pick your show. Pick your movie. Sit back. Do you enjoy watch it? The, uh, binge watch the whole series. Yeah. What you need to do... Is turn myself in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what you need to do is use your shield and then just legally purchase these shows. That you would where? Do. Huh? And if there's no there's no selection of where to purchase. And, and there's Come nowhere on. to turn myself into who? Who do I go to? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm illegally obtaining TV and movies. Seriously, I can't believe that you're not fucking running to the border with that <laughs> fucking caravan. <laughs> they all have these shield boxes. They're all just stealing content. I'm telling you, it's the greatest invention of all time. Of course it is, because you get, you get to steal stuff. Um... Hey, Tom, Tony in California. Yeah, hey, guys. Uh, so I work at NVIDIA, uh -huh. and our product is the Shield, one of our products. And I just want to let the guy who's calling in know that anything that's on the home screen that you're viewing and you want to stream, you're paying for. So the, all the apps that are pre-installed are streaming services that you subscribe to. If he installed a media player that's hacked with an add-on like Cody or something else, he's definitely stealing. It's theft. It's copyright violation. And if anybody is looking, you know, you can definitely be in trouble for it. No, uh, he, he, here's probably what happened, right? One of his fucking buddies came by, has this thing, put all the illegal shit on it, sold it to fucking Flats, and now Flats is just sitting there. But you're saying in Absolutely. no way would the maker of the shield want to uh, bankrupt themselves <laughs> by loading it up with illegal streams. No, absolutely not. I mean, you know, we're a multi-billion dollar company, and there's no way we would ever do that. I own eight shields, and I have my family members using them for legal streaming, Amazon, right. Netflix, Hulu, et cetera. Uh, Third-party hacked so, you know, yeah. players, then, yeah, you can get content. And a lot of them have been shut down, and then the next week a new one comes up. So it's, it's more than likely back that we, his buddy installed it, and it's great because he can stream everything until the day that he has. And if his provider uh, is, is watching, yeah. and then they lock it down to his MAC address, then, oh. yeah, they can get it. <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, Flats, did you hear all that? That's from the manufacturer. Yeah, I'm on the run already, bro. I'm packing my stuff. <laughs> Let me just ask you this. <laughs> The guy that gave it to you, how I much it fucking, at Amazon. How much money did he fucking owe you for <laughs> Coke? <laughs> Ronnie, I bought this on Amazon. It came right to my house. I plugged it in, put it on my Wi-Fi, and then I did download some of that stuff he talked about. Cody, Morpheus. <laughs> Yes! yes, Cody's the fucking illegal program that fucking just Free streams flip. shit I illegally. On, I went on, uh, I googled the top ten programs <laughs> for the box. The illegal they gave programs. Me the names, I loaded it in, and I, let me tell you, I am by far a computer genius. So it was easy <laughs> for me me to, to do it and get it, yeah. and. Uh, I am enjoying everything for free for over a year, so I don't know what to tell you. Uh, <laughs> Just tell us that you're a thief. So far. So far. And it has all the games, too. All the PlayStation and Xbox games. It comes with the controller. I sent you a picture of the yeah, we saw it. box, and it shows the controller. <laughs> I've, ha I've handed it over to SiriusXM. 
legal department. <laughs> Well, I found the list he uh, had, and Cody's one of them, and Cody's the one that you get all the illegal shit on. Of course it is. But this is what was driving me crazy yesterday when I'm like, you're fucking stealing flat. No, dude. It's fucking got everything. Please get it. <laughs> From Amazon. <laughs> Somebody called in and says, like, that uh, Kramer Seinfeld, remember that? With uh, Jerry is capable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jerry is capable. And then he got shot, and Kramer yells, Cable Boy! <laughs> Might be my fucking favorite ever. <laughs> All right. Um, let's get rid of Flats here. Flats, thank you very much, buddy. Peace, Flats. Okay. Peace. Peace. Um, well, then I'm going to go take a piss. I'm going to be totally honest. Hey, tell everybody how to get the shirts, the legal shirts, not the bootlegs. The brand new legal Bennington shirts, they're available now at iBangShop.com, iBangShop.com. And as long as supplies last, you will get a signed Bennington poster with that T-shirt, iBangShop.com. Um, Vito just made us sign a bunch of posters before the show today. It's fucking annoying. <laughs> There's going to be more to sign. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another story that we missed when we were off, and if anybody's uh, eating this besides Earl, 844-ROCK-GOD, 844-ROCK-GOD, it's the Popeye's chicken sandwich, which people went so fucking crazy for that they were running out in stores, and then somebody tried to rob a store for a chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Times are hard in America. Now, it's just chicken and a pickle. On a sandwich. On a so, toasted bun. So basically, it's the idea of like a guiltless Chick-fil-A, because that's the Chick-fil-A. That's a fried chicken sandwich yes. with just pickle. Yeah. And I heard a lot of people comparing, like, finally we have an answer to the Chick-fil-A sandwich. Was there a question? Um, <laughs> who else could do it? I don't think anyone who had two buns and fried chicken. I mean, I don't understand. I don't know. That Chick-fil-A sandwich, there was always something about it. Did they make anything else but? Yeah, they make other sh shit, but I, I never messed with it. Did anybody? I mean, did somebody go in there and go, give me the wings or give yeah, me the rest? I don't know. I, I've only been to Chick-fil-A a couple times. I'm not yeah. the biggest fan of it. But, but I saw, like, everybody sandwich. was comparing and being like, this is even better than that. And people were going, I, I mean, there, this was like the story of, of this last week. I know. People were going crazy for this sandwich. They were like, in the hurricane, there were still people <laughs> in, uh, in Bar uh, what was it, Bermuda? Bahamas. Bahamas. Bahamas, yeah. They were lined up in the Bahamas, no. people letting the water come over their heads. <laughs> um, yeah, there was literally a two-week hurricane story that still has another week or two left into it. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, and I feel like that's early. This is an early one for the season, right? Like, this is about the beginning of the season, yeah. late August, September into probably late September. And I always say this wake me up when September ends, you know? <laughs> the hurricanes. Yeah. It's really what we've been getting out with this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, between those two things, I feel like everybody has been, uh, has been just totally focused on the sandwich. There are a lot of uh, just um, Popeye's employees just quitting because, like, we can't deal with this fucking. Is sandwich. that right? Yeah, yeah. They just walkouts. put down their apron. Yeah, and then like, apparently, like, because so many places sold out, and they were just making so many fucking chicken sandwiches. They're like, I can't deal with this shit. I got, I quit. Were they temps? I know. I mean, it doesn't seem like you want to be in the chicken game <laughs> if you don't want to get a rush like this. Now, Popeyes, we had talked about this before. Popeyes has been coming on strong with everybody acting like yeah. it's delicious. We tried some here. Mm -hmm. For fast food, I would say it's not bad. Right. I'm sure it's not good for you're, you. You're saying basically better than KFC if you're gonna if you're gonna have to have. A well, fast I, food. I wouldn't dream of going into a KFC. <laughs> uh, I would honestly, I wouldn't dream of it, but. I don't think bread makes chicken taste better. I think there's some things that don't belong on a sandwich. I'm going to put a fish there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like a fish sandwich doesn't work. I've come around to lobster roll. The idea of that oh, yeah. grossed me out at first, but now I'm like, okay. I like a shrimp po' boy. Oh, well. not me. Shrimp and bread? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'd rather be like that woman. I think the video is up on the iBang who ate. Four giant fucking half gallons of mayo at the same time. Earl wants to beat that. You think you could do it, Earl? Why are you writhing if you want to do it so much? 
you know, like I love mayonnaise, but I don't love it that much. So I'm going to be eating a, bu- a gallon of it or whatever hey, she was eating. If you had to eat one condiment just on its own and eat a bunch, how much, Gail? How much would you, like, would it be a jar? Would yeah, it be let's a say, gallon? Let's say, yeah, you have to sit down and eat like a... Like quart. Let's say a quart. A quart yeah. of uh, a condiment. I think that's Look, good... Earl is fucking choking. We, there's nothing in your mouth, Earl. This is stop. No, put the water down. I want you to be a big boy and be able to look at her. Okay. She look at her. It. No matter mayo. what. Shit. That's starting to make me gag. I know. Because mayo, I actually thought could be close to my answer. Oh, mayo like, is not good on its own. Oh, boy. I've definitely had mayo sandwiches before, but now I don't know how much I've eaten just how straight. How poor did you grow up? <laughs> That's so sad. That's the most Nothing. depressing thing I've ever heard in my Not life. Even just a piece of lettuce or tomato? <laughs> Nothing, just white bread and mayo. Oh, my God. Mayo bread is so sad. So Man, this ma- woman's going to make me sick. Would mayo be your... Spicy cor- brown mustard. Spicy brown? Though? Yeah, a I really like it. I think you're going to puke. I really like the taste of vinegar. I understand, but mm. I don't think you can have a quart of vinegar either without puking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Earl, what about for you? It would be, uh, and I'm, I'm gagging as I say, I would still go with mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. This is you right now. This what about video. you, Gail? I'm going soy sauce. I think that oh. it's an enjoyable flavor. I didn't know it was uh, a condiment. Kiko, Kiko Men would be my preferred brand. I'm not going to mess around with some, like, you know, just like the little packets that you get at Chinese food. Kiko Men soy sauce, I think. If I had to choose a condiment, that's what I'm taking on. I think I've got the perfect condiment mm-hmm. because, quite frankly, I believe it's a food as well. But this is more of a condiment than uh, as much a condiment. Relish. Be oh like eating. God. Be like eating pickles. No, I think that uh, really I don't pick. even think I could get a tablespoon down. What are you talking about? You don't, I, like, you don't like pickles? No, well, I love pickles, but I don't like sweet pickle. And the majority of relish is that sweet pickle. I'm relish. mixing in some onion and hot dog with mine. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Sounds really You're good. You're not now. doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> and a little mustard. <laughs> okay, she, this woman also makes a certain expression as she houses this mayo, and it's like really. You know really who's going to watch sick. this? All the fucking cum kinks. Oh, good. <laughs> well, this is like a bukkake. Yes. It's a uh, safe for work bukkake. <laughs> Finally. She's gross. She's <laughs> disgusting, man. That's too much cum. What are the calorie <laughs> content of this? Yeah, the right calorie now? must be through the fucking roof, I mean, right? She's, she's got to fucking vomit this out or just immediately just. And it's like predominantly like egg, right? It's just. It's egg and vinegar. Oh, boy. All right, what's your condiment, Vito? I can eat a lot of cream cheese. Like, oh, I can take spoons to tubs of cream cheese. I've well, done it. Well, first of all, when did cream cheese become a condiment? It's, it's a, you a put condiment it on stuff. for one item, though. It's like a bagel's condiment, but would you say, like... The cream cheese I, is no, a cheese. No, wait. I actually think of the that as a cheese, like, almost like an okay, entree. That's, okay, so you're saying It's a soft the meat. cheese. Okay. Yeah. That's, you know, that's like saying, oh, I have American cheese so as my condiment. Because you know, I put that on the sandwich to make it feel better. <laughs> no, I'm rejecting that. I wasn't even crazy about soy sauce. Soy sauce is a condiment. You put it on. You put it on. Name Chinese food a or... single sandwich that you put soy sauce condiment on. Condiment doesn't have to be on a sandwich. Name another condiment that doesn't go on a sandwich. A salad dressing is a condiment. Oh, God, no. Yes, it is. A hundred percent. A condiment is something you add to your food. That isn't the main, it's just like to jazz it up a bit. Is butter a condiment? The way Gail's going, everything's a condiment. <laughs> no. Roast beef Look, is a condiment I, to her. No, I'm telling condiment. you, I stand by this. If soy sauce is a condiment, where would you put that in your fridge? On the Asia. door with the rest of the condiments right next to your ketchups. Really? Because there's milk right there, too. So is that a condiment? <laughs> Maple syrup is that a condiment. Yeah, it is. Maple syrup is 100%. I'm going to fucking agree with Chris. Maple syrup own, is a syrup. It's its own separate thing. No, it's, it's a, a condiment. condiment for a pancake, a waffle. Don't what give have me a quart of maple syrup. That's the easiest <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> Why did I make soy sauce? Oh, because you wanted to try to cheat the game. <laughs> I didn't want to cheat the game. I chose a condiment that I find delicious. I think the condiments are mustard, ketchup, relish. No, come on. No. Hot sauce? Hot sauce is a condiment. It is not. It's a sauce. Are no, all sauces condiments? No, look, ketchup's no. a sauce. It, oh, oh, do you guys have gravy as a condiment? Is that where we're going? You pour that on to make food taste better. <laughs> I, it's I no, don't. It's no condiment. I, 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 
that's going to be a gray area for me. I'm well, no, it's say not maybe. a gray area. It's then black fine, and then white. Yes. The gravies, the, 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 other, uh, the gravies and your, like, uh, your... Chris, don't help yeah, if you're going it. to fucking hurt. Look, here's the thing. I mean, I hot fucking sauce. tag teamed up with you. Here's the reason that hot sauce is a condiment. You're saying it's a sauce. You wouldn't just pour it over some noodles and call it a meal. People do. Well, People I've... put hot sauce on noodles. People put hot sauce on everything. And popcorn. No, I'm saying as strictly only the... S- sauce like the way yes, you use tomato sauce no you got to go to the middle of the country you know what you're too much uh, an elite coastal person dude i'm saying that i feel like 100 percent hot sauce soy sauce these are all condiments you're uh, is honey now a condiment i mean mm, where is sugar a condiment no no you put that on your that's fu- a spice hold on you put that <laughs> you put that on your cereal to make it taste better <laughs> Uh, uh, let's go to Mark from Georgia. I would say strawberry jam, strawberry See? preserve. Thank you very much. Okay. This is proving the point. Mark, your wrong answer helps Chris and I a lot more than his fucking... Insane stammering? Yeah. I mean, if you would have brought up jam, but I guess... No, that's in the jam aisle. We're, we're, this is a jam. A jam is not a condiment. It's its own well, thing. Well, what about fucking kick out the jams or pump up the jam? Yeah. I mean, that helps the song, doesn't it? <laughs> um, ECD in North Carolina? Uh, that would be Ed. Okay. And according to... <laughs> Literally says ECD. Well, there you go. Hey, uh, according to you, girls, spaghetti sauce would be a condiment. Yes. That's what I don't she's think it is. At. A sauce is different, and a hot sauce just happens to have the word sauce on it. Because it's a sauce. Dude. Why can't you just admit different. that you're wrong? We move along and everything's fine. Oh, my God. All right, Jim from Boston. Yeah, I agree with Ron. Mustard, relish, ketchup, maybe mayonnaise. Those are condiments. Yes. Everything else is a season. Everything else is a seasoning. A seasoning? Now, now we're talking about a dry spice. If I hear a seasoning... I'm assuming that you're talking about he's like not a dry speaking, rub. Well, he's not speaking for all of us, okay? <laughs> Don't try to put him into my tag team. I got B and Yammer and Jeff over there. How about ranch? Is that a condiment? Yeah, yeah of yes, course. It is. Anything that goes on a fucking salad, Gordon. Uh, yes. Russian <laughs> dressing is a condiment. Okay. A dressing is a condiment. But you'd put you'd put ranch on a sandwich. Who does? I don't think I ever have. You're not the barometer for everybody, Chris. Well, come like, on, you, I, he is. This fuck, in this game, he is. I'm the everyman. Mark in Illinois. Uh, so if I put peanut M&Ms on my popcorn, is that a condiment? No, no it's, it's delicious, not. delicious, though. It's not. I see where you're going Are sprinkles with this? a condiment? <laughs> that's the big question here. Because if that's it, I'm going to have some little Jimmy fucking things. <laughs> Give me all the Jimmys you can. First of all, this American hero... This fucking woman gobbled down, it looks like four gallons yeah. of mayonnaise. It's up on the eye bank. And really one of the most disgusting displays <laughs> I've ever seen of heroism before. <laughs> I'm just shocked she didn't get more all over her shirt. I mean, she was really great about keeping it in the mouth. Okay, yeah. that's just your own personal problem. <laughs> because that's the game we're playing, how much you could eat. Not paint your shirt. <laughs> she would have lost. Yeah, that. disqualified. <laughs> Chris in Texas. Hey, Ron, I want you to know I painted my tank this weekend. Well, good for you. <laughs> paint the tank. You got to paint the tank. Horseradish, like Arby's horsey sauce. That's oh, yeah. Definitely- Horseradish, I would agree with you, is a condiment. Everything's a condiment to this fucking crew. <laughs> Everything. Not to me, Ron. I, again, now I'm kind of wishing that I had uh, had picked horseradish because I do think there's a condiment. Condiment. I don't think you can eat too much horseradish, though. Fuck no. It's it's spicy. I will say that. Michael in Florida. Hi guys. Hey. So so it's like a progressive world where everything now has to become politically correct, right? And exclude something and include something. That's but what... I, I'm in the food. I'm in the food industry for 25 years. Well, then you're an expert. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Three condiments: mustard, mayo, ketchup. That's it. End the story. I agree. No. As do I. Right. I agree. L- look, yeah. those are the classic you guys should be American fighting, condiments. You guys should be fighting no. with me over relish because I included soy sauce? it. Where do you get soy sauce from? Uh, Asia. Yeah, that's where I get it. 
Um, and um, I well, think, wait, why are we even going on with this? An expert who's been in the food industry all these decades. He just named th- the three major American condiments. Right. Yes, yeah, so nobody doubts that. Here's the here's the fight that we have. Do we include relish or not? Is relish a condiment? Yes, I'll yeah. say it's a okay, condiment. Okay, so four, just like the Beatles, no. there's four condiments. <laughs> Which one is which, though? Like, if you had to cast the Beatles as you know the condiments. What? I'm going to say that I'm the mustard in the group, you know, because I'm so biting. Oh, yeah. Chris is definitely the mayo. Mayonnaise, 100%. Yeah. Mostly just because it's always on his shirt. Uh, I'm going to give uh, relish over there to Vito. There's no doubt healthy. about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's Sweet. a healthy guy. And Gail is ketchup because she is cat shit in this conversation. <laughs> I thought I was ketchup because I'm the only southern bale of the no, group. No, you really are. You really are. But are you a K or a C ketchup? Ketchup with a K. Wow. Ketchup. Okay. Uh, Ted in Providence. Hey, buddies. Hey, um, how's it going? I uh, Good. Gail, I love you. I don't. I, I want to respectfully disagree about soy sauce. I don't think... I'm being respectful, too. Anyone... <laughs> Feels. I don't think anyone could sit and eat a bowl of soy sauce like It's soup. so disgusting. Okay, fine. Yeah, fucking... You can re- disagree on my ability to consume soy sauce. I don't sauce. even know if you could do a shot but of it. But will you call it a condiment? Well, yeah. I, I actually would. I think it is a condiment. That's more important to me. It's, it's a decorative item. However, there is one con- one thing that I do think is a condiment and I think would be the easiest consumed. I don't think anyone's brought up yet. Salsa. I think bowls of salsa would be pretty easy. For salsa, and I'll call dip. that... <laughs> it is a dip. In okay. that case, I want guacamole. Yeah, I mean guac. Okay, these are dips. I'm gonna go. I'm here's where I'm starting and to soy draw sauce, you Vito? dip. It's a dip. Vito and I, I dip my soy sauce as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I use that yeah. as a dip. I don't use that to just you don't spread dunk? over it. Okay. Yeah, dunking is dipping. Okay. There's no fucking difference there. So you just you made our case, scale. Thank you. No, that's it was not a great, great argument. No, here, shake hands. I won't shake, <laughs> shake hands. Shake hands. I'm not. You know, you get in here and no. shake my hand. Don't touch his you hand do it. with your hand. You do it, or you're working till midnight tonight. <laughs> You know what? I have to learn to be. I don't know if you guys saw Bobby Moynihan put out a thing for all the parents, but it was about being finding a kid at school and being nice to that kid, the kid that doesn't have a friend. And now we're trying to say nice is cool, which was just the opposite of my school. Right. Yeah. It used to no be. Was nice in my school. Oh, he's so cool and mean. I no like how... <laughs> Did, Would you ever go out of your way to be nice to somebody? When I was a kid? Yeah, yeah I would. That's nice. You, Chris? I don't remember doing that, no. No, he wouldn't. There was a kid called Baseball Head that we used to let sit at our fucking cool table. Oh, that's nice. But we teased him a little bit, but that was all part Did of the have fun. scars? No, he had a very small head. Okay. Size of a baseball. I was just assuming, like, matching scars on either side. Yeah. And then we always said him and this other girl had to get married, and then they would both yell at us. And it was fun. It was fun for everybody. I don't know how the parents would like it. Um, but I would say this. There was a kid at my school... And people teased him because he had a bad childhood. He didn't have a yeah. a good family. And I said to him, dude, you got to start your own family. You know what I mean? You create your own family. Yeah. That's and I don't know what ever happened to little Charlie Manson, but oh. I oh, hope no. he did God. okay. Oh, you know? Not didn't. good. Hmm? Not good advice. Well, it's, you got to be nice. Stanley in Missouri. Hey, guys. I have to go with Ron on this. Thank I you. Think that's the ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, uh, and relish would be your four. Because based on you guys' philosophy with dressing being a condiment, does that mean croutons and bacon bits are a condiment? Sounds like no, it. Sounds it like everything on the, uh, the Albertsons should start and call themselves the condiment <laughs> store. Stanley, bacon bits and croutons, those are garnishes. Toppings. Those are garnishes. Right. Toppings Another one, of course, is soy. No, mm-hmm. that's not a garnish or a topping. That's a that is by far a condiment that you add to food. It's a saucy condiment. It's not saucy at all. It's more like a thin liquid. <laughs> that's good. Matt, <laughs> Matt in thin Washington. Liquid. Good one, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I like being on Chris's Hello. side. Do you? Yeah, I would hate it. <laughs> <laughs> he had that thin <laughs> liquid that I think put us over the top. Thanks, no, Rod. he definitely Me didn't. Too. Matt in Washington. Hello, I'm just looking at it like this. I guess if we're going to uh, call soy sauce a condiment, how come uh, 
Cool Whip can't be a condom. I put cool Whip is a uh, broke ass fucking mayo. <laughs> Sweet, <laughs> it's sweeter mayo. Yeah, I mean fucking <laughs> Cool Whip is in the mayo section, and people have grabbed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any of that dessert mayo? Uh, Tony in Iowa. Hey, Bennington gang. Yeah. Don't consider this a cheat, but how about special sauce? McDonald's special sauce. Well, that's just ketchup and mayo. It's a combination mixed. of two existing yeah. condiments. Yes. Um, I think that's something all four of us can see yeah. and agree on. Yeah, the special mix- sauce. Yeah, it's but just a combination of... Uh, I, I say break it down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, break it down. But a lot of people put two condiments. Like, people will put mustard and relish on a hot dog, but yeah. it doesn't... You're not going to start calling it another name. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's insane. You can't start and call it fucking hot mustardy pickles. <laughs> Ken and That's the bullshit McDonald's tried to get away with. <laughs> and they rode that train for decades. <laughs> Ken in Oklahoma. How about chili? You put chili on a hot dog. That's a meal. Chili dog. Chili. chili. That's yeah. oh, insane. It's a condiment. It's prepared as a meal. <laughs> you, you can eat chili separately. It's so yeah. a separate food item. It's I a think, condiment. I it's like cheese. I think that know? chili can move with the times. You know what I mean? Like, it's a meal or is it... I, just, I can't put it with the because it's like there's chili eating competitions. There's no mayo eating competitions. Well, well, there's there's one right here. You just shit. set the record. Well, it's not a competition. Look, look, look. Hey, Gail, you better shut your people up Dude, when they get no, you in trouble. Just, like keep this. it together. You just one woman. Steven in North Carolina. She won the record. She had to beat somebody's record. Most in the world. <laughs> Thank Guinness. You, Chris. Idiot. Oh boy. He's good. Steven. My guy's good. North Carolina. Oh, barbecue sauce is. Definitely a condiment. Barbecue sauce. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that a sauce? That's a sauce. I mean, yeah. you don't put it on a sandwich. People do. Yeah. People will put it. You're oh. fucked a up. If pulled you pork sandwich, Chris? Yeah, pulled pork sandwich. But do you, do you want it cold on there? Or do you want it fucking Some poured on do. the pork? Some the... people do a, like a barbecue burger where they have like bacon and yeah, barbecue but then you sauce. Pour, you pour that on the burger as it's cooking. I'll no one pours cold. it right out of the bottle. I think some people that's do. That's, that's I guess I'm a show. scumbag because I, I I've only yes, eaten cold. Yes, you're a fucking filthy fucking scumbag. <laughs> that's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard in my life. Freak. Yeah, I'd rather you put razor blades on the burger. Tim in Florida. Hey, Bennington. Yes. Uh, Gail, I love you, and I wanted to go to the internet to prove you wrong, but Wikipedia, the fountain of all knowledge, says soy sauce is a liquid condiment. Of Chinese origin. A liquid, liquid. Liquid condiment of Chinese origin. Yes, Chinese. So, yeah. That's not our country. It's on this planet Earth that oh. we share. And you know what? I'm condiments without borders. That's how I feel. <laughs> not me. I'm, uh... I want to have like our nation number one. I want to make America number one. I want to make America first. Build that wall of condiments. Yeah. Mm, that sounds delicious, Chris. Lickable walls. You can just lick each one. Can we just solve this and bring Earl in? Okay. Earl, I don't know, honestly, but. Here come the judge. Here come the judge. Here come the judge. By the way, Earl, you seem well rested after your break. You do. Yeah, I feel pretty good. Um, I feel like you were like getting a cold just before we left, and now you're he quit every left. other day. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. Nuke the chips. Nuke it. You look good. Thank you, Earl. Yes. What are the condiments? What are the four condiments? <laughs> no, that's a, that's what? a trick question, and has... you're leading. You're leading the witness here. Somebody so... has to or I'll just sit there. <laughs> what? Consider a mustard, mayonnaise, ketchup. Are there more condiments than that? Soy sauce, perhaps. Uh, see, barbecue sauce. Can I just say this? Are any of them ever in the condiment section? One hundred percent. They're all in the condiment section. I want you to put pretty soy little sauce. maids all in a row. I want you to put soy sauce on a hot dog and tell me what the fuck. But is it a hot dog arrested. is not the only vessel That's for a thing. condiment. There are other things. Oh, yes, sandwiches. Uh, hoagie. Yeah. Yeah. What? What? Sandwich? Would you put a fucking soy sauce on? No, I'm saying there are other things other than a hot dog. The you... whole thing for condiment is things that make your sandwich better. No, that's it's... what we're talking about when we say condiment. Earl's nodding yes. Yes, no. I mean that's Not... what I would consider. Like I would never put like on a let's say a salami and cheese sandwich. I don't know if put soy sauce on it. I would you just put, no, put that's ham not on the it. question, Earl. You're <laughs> because getting, you don't want to go straight salami. Him. You're confusing <laughs> him. Keep him on task. The idea is that let's say you there are. 
a, plenty of things you can put condiments on. It's not just for sandwiches, which is why soy sauce could be a condiment for your sushi or your, you know, like Asian food in general. It's a condiment. I don't think when we're talking condiments, we're bringing Asian food into this. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. gonna be. They can have condiments though. So, so they use a spicy mail. I'm gonna be like Bill the Butcher, and this condiment argument is an American argument. Mm. You know, is Vegemite a fucking condiment? Yes. I don't know because I don't give a shit what those Australians do. <laughs> That's disgusting. their fucking business. They ought to try to fix the reefs. Um. Uh, what about wasabi? What about? That's no, a plant. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Why bring it up? It's fucking too hot to eat. <laughs> I think wasabi sucks. Andrew, Andrew and Boston. I never, I never, never want to eat wasabi. Never. I like wasabi a lot. Even ginger. Either. I put it in my food. No, sauce I don't too, fucking have any of that. Two, two <laughs> condiments to mine. By the way, you know who finds that disgusting? The Japanese. Yeah. They do. They find it offensive. I know they do. Andrew in Boston. So, I think that anything that comes in a small plastic package mm -hmm. that you can walk away from a restaurant with is considered a condiment. So the soy sauce, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Andrew. Fire sauce from Taco Bell. Yes. Oh, what about those little milk things that come in a package? Is the creamers? <laughs> is that one? Yeah. According to this guy. Oh, I've got my coffee condiment, everybody. <laughs> I guess a condom's a condiment. You then. know what, Andrew? You and your corporate way of looking at this fucking country, <laughs> as if only the fast food joints can judge. A it's Andrew, disgusting. You're to me. a patriot, and I agree with that. He's the exact opposite of a patriot. <laughs> He's a man who supports. Soy sauce. Tracy, you brought the gang this time. Oh, yeah, it's my pro. <laughs> yeah. My brothers. Yeah, good These to see you again, man. Right on. Let me turn my phone off before we begin. I would love to keep the phone on just to see who calls you. Oh, <laughs> hi, Michelle Obama. <laughs> she be bothering me every night. I got to tell her, you know, tell for rocks, I'm calling my house. Oh, you got to turn your phone off, too. <laughs> Who's that going to be, Trump? <laughs> uh, first of all, I just want to say to Alan, how crazy is this gig that you got with Tracy and all the people? That it's, have to you know, I, it's it's unbelievable at times, man. You know, uh, it's a kid from Rialto working with a legend. I mean, working with, I'm sitting in between two legends right now, <laughs> man, that I grew up watching and, and idolizing, you know. Me and Matt freestyle all the time. You no, know, we don't. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We're going to talk about that off. Yeah. <laughs> but no, nah, it's a dream come true, man. I'm, I'm living a dream, man. It's, it's, look at this. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like, it's phenomenal. Tracy, uh, what, what made you think that, that he would make you good, kind of right hand? As soon as he walked in the door. Yeah. As soon as he walked in the door, he'll tell you the story. Yeah. I don't got to tell it. He yeah. can tell it. Yeah. yeah. You know, as soon as you walked in, I, I, in my mind, I said, that's Bobby. That's cousin Bobby. Yeah. We all, I, I read with a lot of people, but with him, when he walked in, we went right into the characters. Yeah. And Jordan Peele and everybody was sitting there like, oh my good. <laughs> this is, this is, I, and I told him, that's who it is. They was leaning towards us. I said, no, that's my cousin right there. Right. Yeah. He came in and the part was his. Yeah. From the gate. Man. Yeah. And I was so happy. And it just let me know that things are coming together. Well, uh, this is the amazing thing. Uh, obviously, uh, everybody... And I felt the same way for Method. You'll yeah. see tonight, Method fit the description of the person that I wanted him to play. And when he came and did he, the role, he exceeded my He exceeded my vision of it. He exceeded mine. I was really happy. So you'll see in tonight's episode... We starting to raise the emotional stakes in the show. Mm. It really is. It's always been a, you know, a, a show that one of the themes has always been redemption. And the difference, I think, in what Method plays is Green Eyes is here's a guy who didn't get busted, but has this moment of clarity just from hanging out with Trey, where he's like, No, oh, yeah. me and him had a backstory. Me and yeah, had yeah, we had a backstory yeah, right. that they yeah. don't show. Right. That's the the me and him had beef coming up. Mm -hmm. Right. Me and him had beef. Like he was, and it was good. So as I did fifteen years, remember, remember, Meth, and yeah. that scene when they cut it out. When I was telling you uh, when 
And I got locked up. I thought about you and all of that. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they, it would have been great, but we wouldn't have had no time to do all of that. Right. Because it was a relationship between, it wasn't always good, but then now we're older as men. Right. And I come to him for help. Right. And that's that kind of redemption thing that you're so, you're so kind to all the characters. Everybody has this opportunity to grow. No one is really locked into what they did. No, that's what the show is about. Second yeah. chances. We say it in the show all the time, right? Right. Second chances is a beautiful thing. Yes, but is. that's the message we're trying to sit out there. Forgiveness and love is the most two most powerful things in the universe. You know, we let's not forget that this is about incarceration and selling crack. <laughs> yeah. 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 This, this is a dark, we color in a dark place. Right. 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 We color in a dark place. So mm. that's what this is about. You know, That's dope. but there's also there's this love for the neighborhood and and everybody in the show is a survivor. And I think that's what's an amazing mm. thing about well, it. Well, me and Alan was just talking about yeah. that. Before you yeah. live, you got to learn to survive. That's right. I don't care if your parents are billionaires. You got to learn how to survive in this world mm-hmm. as a child. Mm-hmm. You got to learn how to survive. So that's what the show is about. Because where we from is the jungle. Mm-hmm. I'm from the jungle. Al from the jungle. Meth from the jungle. We from yeah. the jungle. Yeah, I've so been fighting you, since the sperm cell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's true. Yeah, yeah. you that's got a many of sperm cells trying to get in that one egg. <laughs> yeah, God right, finger right. that's that one sperm, and that's what made you and you an individual. Yeah. So a wise man once told me, "What is the opposite of death?" And I said, "Life." He said, "Wrong." He said, "It's birth." Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's what I took with me: is birth. So this show was spawned. That wise man would be me, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> our king would be our, our king, Yeah, because the brother got knowledge. So yeah. I, I'm glad to be right next to him because he's righteous. Yeah, One of the right. most righteous men I know. Appreciate and, it. you know, so I try to get with him and pick his brain all the time and see how he feels about things because it's important to me. I love Method. Tracy is so gracious, man. He runs a very tight ship, man. I had the most fun I've ever had on any set working on Last OG with him and Al. And you've done some yeah. amazing things up to this point. I mean, you you had a you, you have a career that nobody saw coming. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, well, I told him that yeah. that's your natural progression. Yeah. And people don't realize, but Meth got chops, man. This yeah. dude is a great actor. All, all I need is a chance, you know. Well, yeah. you're gonna that's get it. enough to bite. One day somebody going, I know I know what I got plans for him. I want him <laughs> to have enough to bite on and chew on so y'all can see. This dude is a professional, like, great actor. Yeah. Great actor. And, and he takes it he takes it very serious. Yes, and that's sir. what I, I I appreciate as an yeah. I consider myself an actor. He didn't actor. come on the show, on the show. Nah, he, he respected it. it. Yes, he yeah. did, man. I and appreciate y'all. Yo, Thank yo, you. Oh, it was awesome, Mef. Yeah. We have scenes in the show, man, that yeah. y'all are going to go, whoa. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa, you're going to identify. I don't care where you come from, white, black, Asian. Everybody know about the struggle, man. Mm-hmm. Y'all going to identify and relate with it. And that's the thing about the last OG map that I like. It's funny, but it's grounded. It's very grounded. Almost Everybody every can show, yeah. Every mm-hmm. show has that... Uh, that point that you're like, oh, this is serious, too. All this comedy is in there, and then there's this very kind of serious human struggle that everybody goes through. Everybody knows it. Yeah. No it's, matter what, how much life. money you got, no matter who you are in the world, struggle's always there. Without no struggle, there ain't no progress. Mm. You're still having a, a struggle, Tracy, even with all yeah, the like shark Tupac tanks? Yeah, like Tupac said, I don't want it if it's that easy. Yeah. The struggle, that's the struggle's life. You struggle to get her to buy the drink to drink. Then you struggle to get, take her home. Then you get her the You struggle to get her panties down. Then you struggle to put it in. And then you, you, when, you, when you have that organ, ah, oh, that struggle. Yeah. Then the struggles up struggle. the tube. Then it struggles to get in the egg. Yeah. Then the, the egg is struggling to form. Yeah. Then when the doctor's over, I'm going to push. That's the struggle. And when the baby's here, the struggle has just begun. Wow. <laughs> Well said, brother. Well yeah. said, yes. Tracy Morgan's sex ed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just freestyling it, right? Just, yeah. You always yeah. want to struggle, man. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, was the First idea of the show. First of all, can't this joke throw people away because they've been incarcerated? Mm. That too. We can't. Yeah. If it's a nonviolent crime, we can't just throw people away. Prison is about punishment. It ain't it about rehabilitation. Mm. Rehabilitation? Are you serious? You go to prison and learn how to be a better criminal. We need to rehabilitate these people. Man. 
You can't just institutionalize yeah, them. You can't just throw them away because everybody yep. deserves a second chance, man. man. I got one. I wasn't supposed to walk away from that Walmart truck, but I got one. You got one, big one. And that was one that, you know, everybody was concerned that you'd be able to come back from. You know, it was pretty scary yeah, to long back, But I came back bearing gifts. You got the last OG. Yeah. You got us three. Wear it up. He's, yeah. about to, he's about to go there in the show. And that's why we're giving him his roses now while he can still smell. Come on, talk about it. Nice. Talk about it. Sure. <laughs> uh, what, is, uh, what is the struggle to make this show on a weekly basis? So what, it, what does that have to do to pull, pull the, all that magic together? Does well, it flow? We do it as a family. Yeah. yeah. Everybody on the set is family, right, Matt? Yes, sir. Yeah, show up yeah. on That's time, all family, B. Yeah, man. It's a Everybody unit, Everybody down man. there from craft yeah. service to the executive producers. We do it as a family down there. We ain't going to win if we don't. Except yep. Al be dry, jogging <laughs> like 10 miles I do, I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I'm not getting the shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're the lone runner? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's a mating I'm a runner. <laughs> knees, knees out. Women in that, they come and run. They come and run. Yeah. You also uh, have brought up the struggles, what made you a funny person, too. That, uh... That became your kind of weapon of choice. Yeah, I know. When, when, you know, my oldest brother was born with cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes kids in the playground can be mean. And that's when you go get your big brother. Mm -hmm. And he come back and he got your back. Mm -hmm. And you turn into the little credible hawk and you mess somebody up. I couldn't do that. My brother was crippled. So I had to learn how to survive. So I became funny to keep the bullies off me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But my brother still gave me knowledge himself. When daddy wasn't there. So I know why I'm funny. I know how I became that way. That's from pain. Mm. My brother's legs, I look at him, man. I love him. It's my my God. That's that's my guy. Mm. And that, uh, that was your entire childhood. It was one thing or another for you. I mean, it was... Yeah, my rough. mom's had five kids by herself. My father didn't go to Vietnam, a junkie. He came back that way. You mm. know, at 19, I lost him. He was 39. I was pretty young to lose your dad. Mm. I watched him. I watched him in fear. Mm -hmm. He was looking at death. Mm -hmm. I watched that. It's my dad. And what I got from my mother, my queen, I got her stubbornness. Her stubbornness. She refused to let her kids not have a Christmas and all that. Mm. That's right. So that's what I got from her. She refused to take no for an answer. Mm. So that's what we go. We right. do. You know, I got I got these these beautiful people around me, man. And if it's not me, Memphis saw somebody go through it. I also somebody go through it. So right. we all just this can't I can't do it by myself. Everybody here got stories. Yeah. yeah and man. we just incorporated. We did a scene. Oh my goodness. We did a scene in the season finale. And it was really, really, really intense. And after Reginald Hudlin said cut, I looked at Method, and Method was in tears because he was drawing from a place. He was coming from, so I rushed over to him. And his makeup artist was about to start, and I said, no, go away, go away, go away. And I put my head on his head, and I said, I love you. And you could see it all just come down, come to find out something tragic that happened in that scene happened to him in real life. Yeah. You got to be able to go to a place. You can't, I bet on my set, Never tell you, I bet not catch you acting. I want you to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be in the moment. Everybody. Remember I told you to tell yeah, me? I said no smiling. You if bet you not smiling. smiling. <laughs> yeah. you, the scene. Yeah. you just threw away two seasons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bet not smiling. That so is not about that. Yeah. Like I said, tight shit, man. He knows what he wants. He goes and gets it. I mean, he's not here by accident. No. I, mean, I need something out of you in the scene, bro. And I yeah. will literally. And we had one kid, right, my meth. The kid yeah. that was. I, oh, I he started learned something that day. Him. Oh my gosh, he, he came learned on the something set that day. He was Tracy Morgan fan. And I didn't want that. He didn't want right, to smile right, the rest right, of the day right, after right. that. <laughs> <laughs> I started a beef with him yeah. on purpose yeah. Yeah. to get him in position, to get him in a place, and he didn't know where I was coming from. I started a real serious, like he really thought I ain't like him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then after we finished doing what we had to do, you I leaned on him and I said, I love you. The first and oh, you when we walked out of that strip club, he was stuck. <laughs> <laughs> he was stuck. Yeah. Because he had never been loved before. <laughs> and this is why you're a murderer. Because mm. you ain't never been loved before. 
Mm. Ain't nobody ever loved you. There's people in the room that right now don't know how to be loved. Bob Marley said it best. Could you be loved? Mm-hmm. Could you be loved? This, if you can't, if you don't know how to be emotionally, you're in prison. There's only in prison if you show emotion that can be viewed as weakness and you could be harmed. But in real life, you got to be able to be in touch with that. Save you a lot of heartache, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. Was it's that so hard for some people to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry or forgive. <laughs> <laughs> you better be sorry. <laughs> Matthew, was that tough for you? Because you didn't obviously grow up to go to a vulnerable place like that. So was that, uh, this is part of where you've been going the last few years? You know what? I, like I said, um, it depends on the set that I'm on. Yeah. And I was there for like two weeks before we even shot that. So I was comfortable enough mm -hmm. to be that vulnerable around now. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. It, it Moved fit. everybody that yeah. day. It fit. Well, the, uh, without giving too much away, the entire episode, the last episode, is an homage to do the right thing. And that, you know, that so film. That's all they bring yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah. Because it's real, it's relevant. Yeah, yeah it is. You know, this is a Even today. Love, yeah, man. Yeah. Sure. What is that? What's going on? And the neighborhood is now gentrification. Right. Yeah, gentrification. That's real. Yeah. That's yeah. real. Yeah. And Spike saw that in 89 when there was only one guy, white guy in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, what? What are you talking about? And a little, it was like a Nostradamus move. Like in, Listen, I got saw. family. He got family. Yeah. He got family there. Where do you right. put these displaced people? Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we all want to see the community get better. But where do you, even white people, where do you put these displaced people? Mm -hmm. And we see it every day. It's only new to y'all who have right. experience. Every day. It. Right. You know what I mean? So this is the thing that I love about The Last OG is nothing on TV like it. Because all three of us sitting here, we think outside the box. I'm, that box right there is too small for him. It's too small for him. And it's too for what our personalities and our imagination is too small. Right. I can't stand that. I got to think outside the box. Mm. So that's why you ain't never seen. Why do you think people are gravitating to it? Whether you white or black, you can identify and relate with it. There's something in there for everybody. Mm -hmm. Something in there for everybody. She ain't have to let me back in my kid's life. She married a white dude, and he's the coolest dude. Right, right, He's the right. coolest dude. Those scenes are so sweet, too. And also, Shay this year is remembering more where she came from. Because assimilation... Yeah, well, that was my idea. Yeah. I told him at the end of last year, I want to see what happened her strength. We have to show the strength of the ladies. What happened to her after I got incarcerated? Right. What happened? She was out here with two of my kids by herself. Now, if I would have been out here, I might have took her down the wrong road. Mm. So I got to thank Josh for stepping in and stepping up. Because my kids are beautiful. Mm. That's why we don't have no animosity. Mm -hmm. And I say thank you to him. Because my kids are well. If I would have been out here, I might have. she might have got incarcerated with me. Right. She might have got murdered. Who knows? We've seen it all the time in our lives. Grew up around it. So it's almost like saying you don't know what is a curse and what is a blessing. Blessings can be in the middle of bad things. You know, my everything for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, that truck driver didn't do nothing to me. He did something for me. I was able to forgive him, so it made me a better man. Mm. How long did that take, though? Did, was that quick or done like that? Like that. What do you mean? I when mean, you like, ask God for something, you know. I, I prayed to God, please give me a strip, and it was done. Mm. 14 months later, I was hosting SNL. 14 weeks later. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, if you got to think about forgiving somebody for something, man, mm. that ain't forgiveness. That is not. Right. Yeah. Because <laughs> forgiveness ain't like that. Forgiveness is done. Mm -hmm. Love is done. <laughs> when you got to think about it, you ain't shit. I ain't got to think about that. It was done. Right? Right, Matt? Yes, sir. You know right from wrong. You know what you're doing. Mm. I, I, the, one of the other things, I mean, this show will have church in it. It will have God in it. I mean, it's, it's working on so many different levels. Well, church is religion. Mm. Spirituality is God. That's mm. the connection. Mm. You don't need no middleman. If you rocking with him, you rocking with him. More, sir. If you rocking with him, then you rocking with them. You know, I don't need nobody to tell me. I woke up this morning, so I'm here. So I still know. I, I know. I still know. He still got things for me to do. I don't need nobody to tell me that. I know he loved me. I know I was born out of love. Mm. 
Because I'm here. I woke up this morning. You ain't got to get hit by no truck. You ain't got to get shot. You ain't got to get stabbed. God forbid you could lay down in your bed and just not wake up. Talk about When it. your room is ready, your room is ready. Right. So you might as well live your... I ain't going back and forth with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living my best life, yeah, man. Word. Yeah, Peace of Kool-Aid. Go Duvall. <laughs> I'm song, baby. my dude, Lil Duvall. <laughs> Always pop. Yeah. Can't go back and forth with nobody no more. I'm living my best life. Mm -hmm. If you got issues, man, that's on you. Deal with them. I know problem. I'm fold your arms, booby. That's what it is, man. You do this, you ain't letting the love in. You ain't letting the light in. Not let it is rock. A she might have just been chilly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Alan, you're a West Coast guy, but you spent a lot of summers here yeah. in New York. Yeah, Wagner. Yeah. Yeah. What brought you back? How did how that happen as a kid? Did... Oh man, that's my my father passed when I was like seven, and that's the Puerto Rican side of my family. That's where the Maldonado comes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah that's where the, <laughs> that's where the Maldonado <laughs> come from. Mami, no, you're not that. Papa, los con pollo, sprinkle some of that Maldonado on there. Bro. <laughs> You know, it was just, you know, I was just come back to visit my family every summer, every summer, every summer. Who would have, you know, who would have, you know, known uh, that years later I'd be on a television show. Still you know? coming back to visit his family. Still coming yeah. back. Yeah. Still coming yeah. back to Harlem, you know what I'm saying? So, um, actually, my grandmother's birthday was uh, two days ago. She just turned 92. So, um, man, very, 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 nice, very nice. happy and, you know, proud of what she's, you know, instilled to be, you know, all of that. My you Puerto Rican side and culture. What's up? Just just like but, when, when no. um, <laughs> it was my, my, my basically my decision to have him. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was Bobby. That's what I did with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. They was bringing up all these other people. I said, nope. Nope. I already had it in my mind method. Yeah. I just watched the movie prior with him in it. He was playing that young man's father. Oh, yeah, the breaks. Was, oh, my goodness. And yeah. that was it. Yeah. I told you about that when you came on the show. I said, I watched the breaks. And I said, that right there is green eyes. Love it. That right there is yeah. green eyes. And they was like, this. And I'm like, nope. I appreciate nope. you. And I got what I wanted. Thank you, TBS. I got what I wanted. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. It's my vision. And I tell Alan Allen is in the writer's room. Yeah. And I tell Alan every day. And the funny is there. Yeah. The funny is organic. But please do not mess with my storyline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We keep that grounded. That's what draws people in. That's the people, truth. Yeah. yeah. People don't know what it is to sell crack. They don't even know what it smell like. They right. don't know what it is. They don't know the damage. Right, they just right. don't know the damage. Right, right. They don't know when you're incarcerated. It's not just you. Your family do that time with you. Word. Yeah, that's true. Word. Shay did not. When you watch season one, when Shay throws the brick to the cop car, that was mm -hmm. her remembering that she loved me. Right. I'm sorry that I did 15 years. We 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 dealt with that the first episode this year, and now we get into a visit other places. Mm, right. Me and Green Eyes had beef back in the day. He wasn't right. no joke. Wasn't Carry two three fifty sevens. Mm -hmm. And that's the maturity of an OG. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like these these are OGs and. The fact that when they were younger, they had a you know they had animosity towards each other oh, and the maturity. Oh man, he felt so bad for all. me when I caught that fifteen years. Right. Yeah. He know I wasn't built. Like he know I wasn't. I was just trying to hustle to feed you know feed my family. Like Biggie Smalls, so I'm just hustling to feed my family. Word. Yeah, I got dudes coming home right now. He never seen a cell phone. Oh, is that right? Never yeah. seen a cell phone. Yeah. And, and in person type right. thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? And then it, that difficulty of coming back to a world. That wasn't the world that you left. And that, that's the last OG. Yeah. Yep. That's the last OG. Jordan Peele is brilliant. I dropped the seed. I was the pebble in the pond. And it spread. Mm. I was a pebble in the pond. All my writers and my babies. I love my writers. Yeah, they up. do a great job. Mark right. Theobald, Big Art, all of them. I love them. They're in that writer's room. And they're writing a great show. Oh, they lucky to have you, brother. Please Thank believe you. it. Hey, Thank you, man. Well, one of the things about Tracy is he can turn any line funny, which is always amazing to me, that there could be even some heartbreaking stuff, and you could still find that laugh in it. Dude. Yeah, he used to do a joke about my brother coming to the fight. Cripple. I did it in Bonafide. <laughs> yeah. I did it in Bonafide. He goes, I said, yo, why you ain't come? He said, I was coming. 
He just proved your point. Right? Yeah. Right, 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 point. Right. Oh, yeah. So, growing I, up, that was hard for me. Yeah. My older brother, he's two years older than me. To see my older brother get 21 surgeries and, yeah, and my mom's and, you know, my dad doing drugs. He out and she by herself in the, in the hallway with my brother. He got those, the Forrest gun braces on. Yeah. See my brother, like, it was traumatic for me. So I turned that into something good. We all did. Man. We've all had trauma in our lives. Yeah, and we just getting an opportunity. TBS is getting us opportunity to express it and paint our picture. And we all bringing something to the table. I'm not doing this by myself. He had to draw from a place. He got to draw from a place. Mm -hmm. These are real characters that we know and part of ourselves. Right. So we giving y'all a part of ourselves, man. But Alan, that's the thing about your character is you you are always looking for that role model. Yeah. You know what I mean? And your brother left, Clyde. Yeah. I mean, that's, early. that's the story of the neighborhood. Like, we was talking about it the other day. Like, I, it was one father in the neighborhood. One. Like, one father. Oh, <laughs> like, it was one yeah. father in the one neighborhood. One father. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what it is to go to a girl's house and go, how much Johnson is <laughs> I don't know. That, 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 that didn't happen. That didn't happen. I don't think happen. Think I know it never happened for me. How much Johnson is Johnson? I never yeah. said that. Right. I don't even know how to do that. Yeah, oh, right. so Bobby is a, is an example of that. You know what I'm saying? You don't and... see Shay Farmer. <laughs> yeah, right. that's, right. that's facts. That's yeah. facts. That's you facts, know what man. Right. So we can only do what we do. We got to take care of who we are. Right, right. I don't know what it is to date nobody on those stable. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I had one girl told me that was, you know, she said I got two degrees. I said I ain't getting in bed with you to get no knowledge. <laughs> Trying to come off like a fat rat the cheese factory. <laughs> I ain't getting in bed with you to get no dollars. Yeah. You can believe that. Your money is on a dresser. I left $85 on that dresser. <laughs> if you better check one of your sons, you know they steal. I left $85 in singles right there on that dresser. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody would say like a hundred. Only Tracy. Eighty five. 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 Eighty I'll be aiming for yeah. it. So I try to go for the gut. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not happening. Because the things that is happening on Last OG, you got to laugh. Yeah. And it's the type of show you can't watch by yourself. No, you got to watch bro. that with your lady or your husband. Oh, and and it got to be a discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's when you know it's good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, that's that thing that in the middle of this comedy, you bring in that this is a generational well, that's problem. Well, we saw in good times, right, Matt? Yeah, yeah. a lot of stuff, you know. Yeah. You saw that to yeah. be continued. And they would have to fight over those scripts, too, just yeah. to keep yeah. their, mm -hmm. their, the show grounded and not over the top. And, right. And especially when you're dealing with, especially our people, we... we Hold a judgmental finger even harder at ourselves than anyone else, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's a it's a slippery slope. I think yeah. it's a good balance, though, with Last OG. Well, that's why I picked TBS, because mm -hmm. I wanted to see the show I wanted to see on TV. Mm -hmm. I wanted to tell my story, our story. Right. All of us, not just mine, but all of us, everybody in here. See it in your face. You see the struggle? You think about it right now. Mm. You think about it in your mind. Right. What you've been through in life. Make you appreciate it more. And that's something that is in every single show. That's the amazing thing. I've I've never seen the show go off into a place that didn't have all the elements in mm. it. Uh, it's 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 real life, man. Like real life is is filled with pain. It's filled with laughter. Um, you know, and that's what we try to execute on the show. And I think that's what we really execute on the you show. Said that to me before. You know what I'm saying? That it's real to life. Back the onion. We trying to peel back layers. Right. A great artist doesn't keep adding clay. Mm. He strips away till he gets to the bare essentials. Right. No, 
Don't want to hear it. Tell me the truth. Right. I'm not dealing with nothing else. It's a human story. Yes, I can't deal with nothing else. Right, Mav? Yes, I can't sir. deal with no lies. I know it's a lie because it hurt. The truth don't hurt. The truth is refreshing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to think about that clay line for a while because I've never heard that <laughs> before. Well, and repeat it. Yeah. Yeah. A great artist doesn't keep adding clay. Yeah. He strips away till he gets to the bare essentials. No. Peel back the layers mm -hmm. of the onion, man. I don't care if it make you cry. It's the truth. The truth is the truth. Yeah. Look at the last soul. That's the truth. Yep. <laughs> Matthew, when did you uh, for, first meet Tracy? Does that uh, well, right, go back? To, it's like, dang, we go 30 years on, like, ago. 30 years. Yeah, it's a little less than that. But it's <laughs> 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 I ain't that old. I ain't that old. Actually, I'm talking comedy club. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have uptown, performed there. Uptown, yeah. And I was already familiar with the show because I used to watch it on the late night. Sorry. I used to watch it on the late night, and they used to do these skits on stage. But it, it felt like um, UCB. Right. Uh, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But a black mm -hmm. UCB. And I remember Tracy standing out. It was just this one skit. It was this Valentine's Day. And him and his girl was exchanging gifts. Oh. And I remember how romantic it was because he got a 40 ounce <laughs> yeah, and yeah, a ham and yeah. cheese hero. <laughs> a ham and cheese That's hero. Love. I was like, this dude is real. Yeah. This dude is real. I <laughs> love this, this guy. This came from a little kid on the block named, I forgot his name, but he was. that's the voice of all every inner city kid mm -hmm. whose dad wasn't there. That's what this was about. Attitude. <laughs> this kid. Love that. Yeah, that's and I was just, I was a baby. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew my life, and that's what comedy is: knowing who you are and where you from, and perfection. Mm -hmm. Knowing who you are and where you from, and perfection. That's comedy. Why you think Richard was so great? How could I not be comfortable on that? Stuff? Yeah, I mean, you, see, you see it right, right up your alley, yeah. Yeah. killing him. Yeah. And it was hitting home. For yeah. a couple of us yeah. who had breakdowns and stuff this oh, season, shit, man, it was it was hitting home. So what? And that's where I want to be. My job is to make all y'all uncomfortable. Comfort kills. Yeah, you got fat because it's Thanksgiving. And you start eating. <laughs> <laughs> I love what DL Hughley did. That uh, recently he did a uh, uh, interview with, and I will always love it, DL. I love you because I, I remember what you said. He said, "Comfort kills," and he said, "I value other people's opinion. It's not like I'm right and you're wrong." I mean, I value other people's opinion. Man. I just value mine's more. There you go. <laughs> That's I, he's a, I think right. he's brilliant. He's always been oh, an OG yes. to me. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's so smart and he's so mm -hmm. funny and he's so I quick. I love it. Yeah. He's aware. Yeah. Well, you know, I think also when uh, I watched The Last OG, the thing that I love is I remember you with Martin Lawrence and what he did for you to prop you up. And I see so many people getting And laughed. Tina Fey. Yeah. And Lord, my, all the yeah. people that have contributed to me, not just as a man, but as an artist. Yeah. Those, I got to think about all those people, Eddie. Mm. I got to think about all those people. Tina Fey or OG. Yeah. yeah. Man. yeah. I, uh, and then I see, uh, well, the last episode, of Derek, what Derek Gaines did was one of my favorite things I've ever seen him do, just being in that scene and getting a chance to shine. And you kind of move the ball around all the time with this show. Everybody gets a chance I to shine. I just don't, I'm not, I'm, listen. I'm just not about being funny. I could do that. But we about saying something. Mm -hmm. Watch when you see that last episode with meth and gentrification is about something. It's not just being funny. Mm -hmm. You saying we trying to say what all y'all feel. We trying to do because we feel it's no S at the end of minds. Right. Everybody got one mind. Every man in here think alike. Every woman in here think alike. There's no S. Now there's different brains, but it's one mind. Like Bob Marley said, one love, one mind, man. Mm. Ain't no different kind of love, man. Love is love. Mm. I don't love black people that different than I love white people. No, I love everybody, mm -hmm. man. White, black, male, female, straight, gay. I love you and ain't nothing you could do about it. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing you could do is love me back. Right, right. Have a good day on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day on purpose. Yeah. yeah. You know, that one mind thing that's very interesting, no, too. No, no, no. Do you see the chemistry yeah. right here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Look, nobody's worried about the chemistry in your face. We all say it. You guys come in and talk about one mind. <laughs> finishing each other's sentences. But that's what works in comedy. It isn't like you're hearing something you never heard before. You're hearing something that you thought but you never placed the words for. That's why people laugh and that's why people connect. Mm. It's well, it's comedy. the truth. Yeah. yeah. It's the truth. I never thought of people don't laugh at lies. Lies hurt. Lies hurt. You ever had somebody tell you they love you and they go, oh, what was that? That wasn't love. Mm. But the truth is refreshing. Because mm -hmm. on one level or not, everybody can relate and identify with it. I don't care where you're from. I've, I, got, I got old Asian women telling me, actually, I love the OG. Because yeah. it's, it's not about color. We just happen to be black. But right. it's about the truth. And everybody can identify and relate with this show. Everybody. Right. Yeah, Crazy Rich Asians. It wasn't just Asians went to go see that movie That's made right. in the blockbuster. You can yeah. believe that. Well, you know, uh, also, when we talk about gentrification, if you go down to Little Italy, that used to be a real Italian neighborhood. And now it's just one block, and it's kind of a, you know, oh, it's almost like a museum rather well, than Well, that's, that's corporate America. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what the first corporation in America was? Excuse my friend, do you want to know what the first corporation was? Yeah. Niggas. We was the first corporation. I love how I got quiet in there. Yeah. <laughs> I got quiet like, yeah. oh, shit. Look, 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 look. Like, wait a minute. Look, where you, you going? Think about <laughs> it. Yeah. Think about it. <laughs> think about it. Take him there, Trey. The first corporation was black people. Heard up. Pick cotton, all of that, man. One soul. I got to deal with that. That's where forgiveness comes in. Mm. Can't live your life in the dark like that. You can't you live, gotta live you your can't life. Live. Can't go back and forth about things. You got to live your life, your best life. Because when, when you look at it, man, we here for a second. I'm trying to do something with people I love, man. Mm -hmm. I'm, trying, I'm trying to create some jobs with some people I love. White, black, and, and whatever. And it's, and it's, all, and it's all love. I got to say, I got to say, Trey, like, and I'll say this, man. He's probably one of the, the biggest, like, celebrities I've been around. And he's the... Like the first one to say, I want you to be a star. Like, you know, I want you. Like, I don't, it's it's not about me. I want you to shine. I want you to do your work. And I, he does that with everybody. Like, he's a, he's a giver. And that's what you yeah, see on the show, man. We talking about that with auditions and stuff. Remember yeah. that conversation yeah, we had? Yeah. Man. Read your script. Read your script and give it to him. Give him that. Right. Mm -mm. You got to give him that. You got to give them that. Yeah. You got to, you know how to, I, 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 I told more. on this set, you fine, you cool, you protected. Go to that emotional place. Mm -hmm. Go, let them see the other side. They're going to embrace the crap out of you. I'm free. <laughs> 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 and he did, and he brought it. Yeah. And I was very happy yeah, with did. him. Shout out, have a heart, New York, for um, disadvantaged kids. You know, you guys feel like, you know. Donate and follow us at Have a Heart NY. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. Man. What's the, what's the the organization about? What are they? Um, at risk kids in yeah. um. Oh, I was one. Neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Facts. Doing the good work. Doing the good work. Give me back. Give yeah. me back. Give me back. No matter what color you are, if you're at risk, we're here. Yeah, I, I never said a color. Just at risk. <laughs> <laughs> if you at risk, we there for you. That's yeah. right. Reach out. And uh, and it's amazing when you do that kind of work. You get back so much. Don't well, you? Well, you, well, yeah. you, we're not looking for nothing back. We just giving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what is important. Yeah, I've renovating parks in Brooklyn and everything. We gave you a number one show, and TBS said, "Well, Mr. Morgan, what do you want?" I said, "I want to fix up my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That's where it's going to begin." Then maybe we can this a uh, like a pebble in the pond. Maybe we, we want to give out some turkeys and all of that. Blessings. Mm -hmm. And this show is shot in the streets of Brooklyn. It's in the crazy. Is it? It's crazy. Man. Your mouth, your mouth was good. <laughs> your mouth was good. <laughs> it's like a great location, Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great project. Yeah, Prospect Park. Yeah, Prospect Park. Yeah. Yeah. to come out of it. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it gets uncomfortable. We, we know, and I talked to you about it. I was um, comfy, but yeah, yeah. we are. We are. Yeah. We are yeah. But, it's, but it's, it's love, though. Like yeah, I, when we're there, yeah. we yeah. bring more than these trailers and these cameras. Yeah. To the youth, we bring hope. And, and they this see is, Bobby, and, they see Mel, they see us standing, Alan, they see us standing, Tiffany, they yeah. see us standing, and Nobody they can say, well, trailer. if they could do it, I could do it. Yeah. That happened for me with Mark Breland. 
And and the beautiful thing that I've saw uh, in the community is that the, the most powerful, most impactful thing that I've seen on this set is that I saw three people cry and seeing Tracy back at work. Like, just the hope that he brings to Brooklyn and just the inspiration. And what it what it showed me was just how impactful we are, we are as entertainers and how, you know, how much hope we bring to these individuals. Yeah. And, like, three, I saw three people cry in jo- out of joy because they were just happy seeing Tracy back on his doing what yeah. he does best and making yeah. people laugh. So that's what's beautiful in working in the community as well. Well, I mean, who else has had so many successful shows one after another? The Tracy, I mean, your career is insane. It's insane how many times. It's been Stella. Yeah, it's been Stella. <laughs> yeah, Stella. Yeah. Hey, hey, Stella. Yeah. Yeah. Life Lex, life, life Stella. Lex, life Lex. I mean, everybody in the business just wants to get one thing, and that would be it. And you get thing after thing after thing. It's just, it's. Well, I'm learning from others like Martin and... Eddie and Lauren and Tina and Jordan and all the people I've been I've been blessed to have these people to work with, mm-hmm. you know, and get what I what I wanted. TBS went out and got meth. They go out, they, they hired Bobby, and we look forward to giving you season three. We look, when if we're ever picked up for it, I'm, yeah. I hope I'm praying. We're all praying, and um, if we do, we already coming up with stuff. Right. Yeah. That's real real stuff, good stuff. But when are the upfronts of tomorrow, right? For upfronts to- tomorrow. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you'll hear something today. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last night I was on one side of the bed, my wife was on the other side of the bed, and, I, and that's one thing. Our wives and our children really inspire us. We all talk. Mm-hmm. We all talk as men. We talk as people on the, on the set. We get up and, and the, we talk about the production. I'm talking about the, the cameramen, the grips. They leave their families behind to come and make us look good. Man. So those are the people I really, really focus That's on. Yeah, those man, are the definitely. people that get up early in the morning before we even there. The makeup artists, the, the st- hairstylists, the people that do all of those things, the craft services. Mm-hmm. I love to shout them out. If you look at when, I, when we won the Golden Gloves yes, on 30 Rock, I shouted out them. And I shout out them now. Those are the unsung heroes. That's right. Because mm-hmm. we just standing there if they ain't fixing the lights. Right. You can't see nothing without no lights, <laughs> man. <laughs> so that's what daddy's yeah. there to do to keep the lights on. Yep. And this is deja vu because I dreamt about this moment right here before. Mm-hmm. And I know I did. It just hit me. Beautiful. It's deja vu right here. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's how you're living ahead all the time. Mm-hmm. Shout to mm-hmm. Saladin and uh, uh, Ray yeah. Yeah. Big Sal. I love yeah. you, Sal. Yeah, Big Sal. We also know what it's like that Reginald, we, yeah, yeah, to have a show without lights after uh, seeing what happened uh, a couple weeks ago on a TV show that no one could see. It, Game of Thrones. <laughs> that was a one-hour episode. Everyone was going, what the hell is happening? Yeah, so another shout-out to the light people. We appreciate you. <laughs> More than we ever knew. Got you got to have the lights. <laughs> but, you know, we're talking about this show and you wanted to get another season. <laughs> Financially, you don't need it. There's ambition. You've accomplished enough to go into the Hall of Fame, but you love this show and you want to keep doing it for all the things that you we gotta were talking about. You got to understand, man. Yeah. When me, Alan, and Method, when we're acting and all that, you look at all these people working, they're taking mm-hmm. care of their families. Yeah. Man. Yes. That's the big payoff for me. Yep. Everybody eat. Everybody eat. And that's how I felt with the Wu Tang American saga. We brought, we sure. shooting in Staten Island. A lot of people are getting jobs. Work, that's dope. Dope. Yeah. yeah. So, that's dope. That's and it. and talk about a career no one saw coming. To, as that when you guys started out, that it would turn into so many different projects. I mean, it's uh, no, but see you. Yeah, Wu Tang, yeah. baby. Yeah. I mean, you saw Wu-Tay, that. We are, we, you know. we are part you of Wu Tang's core right, audience. Right. So you have we nine kids. Wu Tang was going to be big, yeah. Yeah. and you beat we them everybody all knew. Every day. <laughs> Joe Jackson, one of them going to be a success. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> and I know for a fact people thought that Obama was soft, but underneath that suit, he what? had a Wu Tang T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm going for life. Yeah, yeah word up. Yeah, word I know every song, up. every lyric, everything. Together. That's that's yeah. like mandatory. Uh-huh. You got to be woo. No that's matter what right. color you are, you woo for, you woo for life. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how big woo is? Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah, know how man. big they are? 
Yeah. Now we're getting to see their story. Facts. Now how it started. Because I know I still wonder how I it know. How right. started. You start taking care of nine kids at once. I'm telling you, like, our economy and budgets and all that, you get the average mom with more than three kids. She could balance the the budget of the whole United States of America, <laughs> the economy, right. everything. Like right. They are geniuses. Wizards. Yeah. Straight like that. If you want to see a black mom go crazy, <laughs> mess her son's hair cut up. <laughs> <laughs> the day before the first day of school, she going to flip and catch a body. <laughs> you know his hair now don't start the way back here by shit. <laughs> Why you did that to my whole thing? Who got my son here? That's you going to come in. What? You're going to have the world the whole toenail at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Dark toenail. The whole barbershop. Which one of y'all cut my son in? <laughs> he came up to his pride. They put my head on. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Mess her son here yeah. the day before Easter. Watch what happens. They're going to shut the barbershop down. Shut it They're going to put yeah. yellow tape around. That's going to be your last it's cut. Up. Investigation. Yeah, that's your last haircut. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do that with Shay, too. Shay is the... the Shay ain't no joke. Yeah, she's the strongest person on the show. But really. I wanted to show that. Yeah. And, it, and she just say there's a lot of moms that single-parent moms. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got to show their strength. Because it's the wisdom. They the whiz, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Knowledge, wisdom, bringing forth, understanding. Right. Those are just lessons, you know what I'm saying? Women, y'all strong. I can't give birth. Y'all pass babies. Y'all strong. We just got muscles. But y'all strong. Mm. But even past that. I want to show that. Y'all Because y'all are God's greatest creation. You got to be a pure genius to come up with the concept of this. Because if y'all wasn't here, this be plan of the apes. You think I'm staying? (laughs) You think I'm staying? I'm off to it and I'll kill myself. No, I was the point. (laughs) Whether you belong to me or not, I need to look. (laughs) <laughs> Y'all know they're looking at moms I know they're looking at moms But well, I need to look yeah. 8 to 80, blind, triple, and crazy If you can't walk, I'll carry you <laughs> I do not discriminate I once said made love to this girl that had a wooden arm Wooden arm Yeah, her wooden hand looked like she was holding a cup <laughs> <laughs> She painted it perfect <laughs> Because she went to LSU. So. Yeah. Like, like I said, that's not really even a punchline. I, 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 how could that even be taught? How is somebody supposed to pick up on that? Uh, you know, uh, I think one of the great episodes of this year is... When Trey is trying to convince his mom that he's back and he's mm. a good man, I mean it's really, really and that's wrong. not anger. <laughs> that was my, in real life. That was pain. I disappointed my moms. That happened in real life. Mm. Well, a lot of stuff is ripped from our lives. Yeah. You know, a mother's. Just, that's why they put that in there. You've seen it. Yeah. No, the only thing one way, one thing worse than a mother's anger, disappointment. That's the last thing you want to do is let your parents down. Mm. My father ain't have to hit me or none of that. My father give me a look. Because I let him down and that hurt me more. When I let him down. When I let my mother down. And I wanted to show that. So we put it in. I just started, me and my mom just started our relationship back again. And it's great. That's my mom. That's my mom. You know, when, when, when kids are little and the parents split up, you know, you and the mother, you and the husband have to work hard to let the kids know we love you. Mm. What happened between us was a me and us thing. But we love you because the first thing when the parents left, the, the, the child thinks it was because of me. No, it wasn't because of you. We love you. Mm. But so much animosity and all this builds up between the two adults. They act like kids and they don't focus on a baby. Because there's they going to be bumps kids. in the road. Right. Right. They're the babies. That's how they right. think. My parents are not together because of me. And then you don't know the damage that does to the babies. Mm-hmm. So I told my wife, you know, there's going to be bumps in the road. Thank God for those bumps. But we're going to go over those bumps together. Mm-hmm. We're going to go them together. Whether we together or not, the road is still there. Mm-hmm. The road always going to be there. So you got to be friends, man. You got to be friends. You work. Your boss know you can't stand him. 
No, because you're busy smiling in his face all day. You're busy smiling in his face all day. But when you go home, she get the bad energy and the frowns and all that. Because she loves you. Well, if you can lie to him, when you go home, you must lie to her. Lie to her. You yeah. must. You must lie. lie to her. Right, right. You must. Because if you don't, right. all it's going to take is for her to go to work one day and the right dude to say, I like your blouse. <laughs> and it's over. What they call them, work husbands? Right, right. Work husbands, yeah, right? Work husbands, yeah. It's over. Yep, my wife's a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> yeah. My stay-at-home. You don't need no job. We got more of my money. <laughs> you don't need no job. Yeah. Job what? <laughs> I am the job. I am. <laughs> you got to deal with me every day. I am the job. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, this is uh, this is a reflection of the show. Here's a show about a, a a crack dealer who went to jail for 15 years, back in his neighborhood, away from his wife, his Made kids, a and it, for some reason, it's optimistic. It's forward thinking. It's that's the stunning. That's stunning what I was thing. telling you earlier about yeah. forgiveness, love and forgiveness. That's all it is. Love and happiness. That's all it is every day. Man. Um, yes, it's all it is, the last OG. Mm. Mm. We need that. It's up, it's, up to, it's up to us to guide the youth in the right direction. Yeah. If they wilding out, it's because we let them down. Mm. Our generation did that. Yeah. Can't blame them. We let them down. And so we showed them. Too. Being divided, on craziness, not getting above it, uh, transcending. Uh, I always remember, man, Cain kill Abel. And I always remember, like people didn't do the railroad, the underground railroad by themselves. Mm -hmm. We needed help. Mm. We needed help. There was some white people that said, y'all come in here and sleep in this barn. Did y'all got to leave in the morning. But they gave us that night rest. They did. It's true. Mm -hmm. Harry Tugman didn't do it by himself. She had help. Right. We appreciate everything. We do. I know, I know these two men right here. Lessons. They're my brothers. Lessons. And I know what kind of men in the character because Method is the one that told me that, you know, tribulation brings forth perseverance. Perseverance builds character, mm. and character makes hope. So that's what we have because there's always a punch's chance. You know, that's the stunning thing about your career and Method's career. You guys came uh, from the most black perspective that Alan you could get. And he ain't so from the many, suburbs. yeah. <laughs> but what always surprising about Wolf Tank? Look at the amount of white fans that they've had over the years. Look at the amount of white fans that you've had over the years, and you didn't look to cross over. You know what I mean? They found something. Right. When what people you guys keep it doing. real when they keep it right. Yeah. That's what's going to gravitate right. to you. I think that's the difference between the generation, our generation, and the generation now, because you know their whole motto is chasing the bag. We sit around and wait so for it to come So, can I ask you a question, us. Mev? Yeah. Is there a disconnect from the um, generations? Nah, it's just uh, stubbornness on both sides. Okay. That's okay. It. It's okay. Not a disconnect. It's coming from the same place. Right. But we don't chase the bag. The money come to us. Mm. They out there chasing. Well, that's what I was saying about the Knicks. If you come to New York, it got to be about the ring, man. Can't be about the money. <laughs> yeah. You see if what happened about to the ring, yes. The money will come. Did you see what happened to poor Zingas? Well, because tonight he left is tonight. The Knicks, he got he got jumped in Russia. We got Russian fans. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, Knicks fans York, in Russia. Wow. Yo, bro, you, can I say you, say <laughs> you know what John Lennon called New York City? What? Rome. 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 This is Rome right here. The Knicks could be in last place and still make the most money in the NBA. Wall Street is right down the block. Mm -hmm. uh, the garden got this right here is Rome. Yeah. And when you when you in hip hop or comedy and you started out in Rome. We start. We come from the center of the universe. Spartans out there. <laughs> clothes wise, all that. Yeah. If you from New York City, you good with clothes. You good with clothes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. This is start here. We all, we all right here. We in Rome. The last OG is filmed in Brooklyn on the streets, and Damn people right. in China want to know what Brooklyn looked like. Wow, wow, that's what it looked like. That's how they talk. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Let me tell you something, man. If you from outside of New York City, it's all right not to know. But when you born in New York City, yeah. you so to know, you down to make money at 10. Yeah. You go to the supermarket no and pack bags and all that. Yep. You just get money at 10. Yeah. Newspapers. <laughs> yep. All kind of. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We had, you, you can open and close on any corner in Manhattan. 
from Wall Street up to Watch the Night where the coke was. Love my shit. It was all money. Mm -hmm. You want to, the hip hop was created in the Bronx. And the Bronx is one of the few places in the world with the word thought in front of it. Yo, Mep, where you going? I'm going up to the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> you don't realize. Mike Tyson was born in Brooklyn. Michael Jordan was born in Brooklyn. You don't Lando say the Bronx. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Right. Lando <laughs> Lando Lando Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> the Bronx. Manhattan, Brooklyn. I'm going up to the Bronx. You, gotta, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to Bronx. You know what I'm saying? But talk like that. Well, I got this little shorty up in the Bronx, yeah. man. I'm going to check her out, man. And if you realize it, if you look at it, his character, Alan's character is based yeah. on my friend, my best friend. Yeah. The first season when we sitting there cutting crack, that really happened. Nah. Me and Alan was bagging up. One night he was like, yo, Trey, why you always make him laugh? Yo, why? I grew up with this man from... You know, our parents knew each other before we were born. Yo, Trey, why are you doing this? You, mean you should be at the Apollo. And I said, shut up, Alan, cut the crack. And he's back. <laughs> Yo, two weeks later, he got murdered. Wow. Going mm -hmm. across the street, we have been going across our whole lives. Never mm -hmm. came back one day. Mm -hmm. And I told his showrunners, and they just, the writers, they wrote it. Yeah. It's like his character is based on a killer. I ain't going to say no names, but a killer. And the way I had it, they had to soften it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had it. Everybody in this room got somebody in their life. They look at it and they go, it's too late. Right. Can't say it's that. It's too late. Yeah. Yep. Everybody got somebody in their life. They look at it and they go, oh, can't help them. Mm -hmm. I love them. I'll try to make them comfortable, but I, I can't. You got people in your life that call you now, and I and I learn. You have to learn. No, it's called survival guilt. When I first started getting money, I'm a dreamer. I want to say the world, but no, you'll go broke. Mm -hmm. mm. No, you got to learn how to say the word no. I ain't got to beat around a bush, and I ain't got to give you no story why I say no. If I say no again, <laughs> I'm going to smack you. <laughs> if I gave you what was on my plate, then I'm not being fair to my family, <laughs> my wife and kids. Because when we ain't got who, we going to go to. <laughs> Better say no. You want to know why she keep getting mad at you? Your brother made them kids let them take care of them. Mm. <laughs> you have fun making them. Yes, I'm supposed to take care of you and yours. Oh. I'm trying to take care of me and mine. Oh my God. I know you got it. I see the last OG. Yeah, I got it, but I ain't got it to give you. Yeah. <laughs> no. I said no. 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 <laughs> ain't nothing yeah. happened, Captain. <laughs> you really do. Because they see me and Me and Mel, we have a high profile. <laughs> and I got to take care of my family. Yeah. Man, well. I ain't even with that Walmart money. It's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I told my wife, you better sit on that box for at least two, three years. <laughs> Don't move on too quick. <laughs> Don't move on too quick. I'll come back and haunt the shit out of you. <laughs> Making love to the next man in the picture full of <laughs> He's here. He's here. That's yes, right, I'm here. But I'm jealous like that, man. Yeah, I'm jealous. You, and then you I ain't gonna lie, I'm a jealous man. Yeah, I'll probably be jealous in heaven. No, yeah. I'll be sitting on my little cloud with my angel wife looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> so who does Jesus motherfucker me? <laughs> When you gonna do some more stand up? I'm yeah, doing it. yeah, right, right. That was I'm it right there, right. man. Right. That... Talk about the hour yeah. special. We need another one. Yeah, of course. One. We, we were another. working on it right now. We on tour. Yeah. We on the road, and yeah. I'm finding material. Cause you love it. I'm fine. Yo, you gotta see the joke I did. Oh my! God. I had everybody. I had people getting up, running out. The other day. <laughs> <laughs> They say I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I was watching YouTube, I seen Bobby Brown's 50th birthday, uh, and I was just, I'm not giving y'all my joke, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for punchlines, no. <laughs> by by the way, one of the funnest. I'm at Caroline's yeah. too. Yeah. Mm. One of Coming the up soon. Uh, one of the funnest experiences I've ever had in New York is seeing you drop in to the clubs here when people don't know that you're going to be here. Then Tracy Morgan gets announced and watch that place explode. Man, It's yeah. really, really cool. Just hanging out. I said, yeah. listen, could I say something? Yeah. Stand-up comedy begins and ends in the clubs. Mm -hmm. I don't care how big you are. 
you're not too big to go to the clubs, to go back to the clubs and do like five minutes. Mm. The stars and the moons and everything is lining up. I'm going to do some some minutes. Now, I don't go on stage unless I got something to say. Real. I mm. just inject my sense of humor into it. But every now and then I go through some time I go through just to help out. This, you know, it's inspiring to the young people. Mm -hmm. When you got young hip-hop dudes, because he's not a rapper. Mm. He's in hip-hop. He's an MC. Mm. Yeah. There's a big difference that y'all don't know <laughs> from MCing and rapping. That's an MC right there. Carol's one MC. Man, he's up there like man. that. Yeah. They say he's one of the top five in the world. You put him in the same level as Ra and K and Slick. I slur all of them. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> nice. I'm talking about nice. But that's natural ability. That's natural ability. Listen to his first joint. I mean, it's, it, Method Man, listen to it. Look Nobody at what he, the wordplay. He nice. And then he has another career just budding. Somebody's gonna go, no, I'm gonna put him in a in a a real, real joint. I just think he's he, I think you know where I wanna put just him. Just gave him my shot. Yeah, no, yes, I know where he's going. You know I know where you're talking about. You know where he's going. I know, 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 know what you're talking about. And that's not has nothing to do with fun. And it's gonna be brilliant. Yep. I always want people to see him in that light. Because that's the light I saw him in. And uh, what's the name of that that joint um, that I was just telling you about? The break, the, the breaks. breaks. Yeah. yeah, I said this dude is in a different light now. Yours, no his. Uh. And Alan, his acting ability. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Reggie Jackson? That's it. 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 I mean, there's a different side to Allen, too. You see that? Man. That dude does everything. Al Maldonado does everything. Yeah, I love his. If you look at the last Joe G, man, his chemistry is, like, awesome. Yeah, man. You know, that's that's awesome stuff. Very talented young man right here. I'm going to big him up while, I, yeah. while he's still here. Man, like, thank you, roses. man. Thank you. I'm writing, yeah. directing. Acting, yeah, I've seen all of it. D boxing, the dude's a samurai. <laughs> <laughs> the Renaissance man. man. Yeah, it sings R and B. Yeah, um, right? yeah, come on, man. He, he does no. He, <laughs> just, he doesn't actually sing it. He just does R and B covers. Yeah, yeah that's that's what covers. That's you know what I mean? Just, and what covers. I mean by covers, I mean <laughs> album covers. That's it. That's Meaning he up. takes, he does the poses. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, all right. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. Smooth. The go. I'm the go. I'm the go to Army. Well, uh, big, uh, big night uh, tonight. Uh, early in the night, uh, the Knicks win the Zion lottery, and that's going to happen. You know it. I already called the government. Yeah. <laughs> and then at 10:30, the first time uh, uh, Method Man is on last OG. So yeah. make sure everybody's yeah. watching. Thank you Yo, but so I much. The last two weeks, I don't know. I, the the, the, the OG been coming on at ten o'clock. It's been at ten. It's and at ten thirty. Yeah, Dad's been on ten and ten thirty. So ten and ten thirty. Well, you yeah. know, they done ousted Turner. I mean, so you know, AT and T in charge now. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and not for nothing, my my phone bills be off the chain, so they might be. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. Don't worry about. I'm talking to somebody. I told you, I know the dude that, had, that runs AT and T. Thank you, brother. <laughs> he created the phone. Check Thank us you. out tonight, y'all. Yep. Tracy yes. Allen, Matthew. Let's hear from everybody. Love you guys.